Ladies and gentlemen out there, uh, this is Artie Lang. This is disgusting. Everybody's too nice now. We're all so nice, aren't we? But the thing is, we're not nice. Secretly, we're mean. That's essentially the show. It is funny. I cannot be a bigger just blob of nothingness and negativity. Party time. You want to get a little limbo dance going? Come on, I'll do it. The, the third person at the table was the bottom of my stomach. <laughs> with hair and paleness and stretch marks. American nightmare. <laughs> Wait, like a smile. And this talks about every controversial subject you can imagine. Shock, shock, Artie Lang on Media Day. Can't be with that sweet stuff. Nah. Smack the sugar right out of you. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Artie Quitter Podcast, show one. (laughs) I am in a crowded apartment that used to be my apartment. Now it's taken over by comedians, producers, technical people, whatever. Uh, but that's what, uh, that's what this scene's gonna be. It's gonna be, uh, hopefully a party. Um, uh, I'll be spewing out opinions, uh, whatever the fuck that means. Uh, uncensored, of course. And I'll be joined by comics, uh, hopefully, you know, uh, mostly, mostly the same guys. I'd like to get in a bit of a groove. Uh, with me here is, uh, Chris Cotton. Hey, what's up? Real funny comedian. <laughs> Chris, uh, this is always the hard part. The first thing you say, you always you feel like you got to be cool. Well, you I blew have nothing. it. I have nothing. <laughs> well, you blew. That was terrible. <laughs> hey there, y'all. Hey that was, there. That was a terrible first thing to say. <laughs> no, uh, well, you. Chris is already complaining that it's too early. Oh, it's early as fuck. I, uh, Chris is a uh, African American, <laughs> and uh, I explained man. to him that white people do get up uh, early uh, to work. On my way here, I, I, I rubbed a dog that I didn't know. I know I'm in a white what nice neighborhood. <laughs> So a white woman just walked up. She was walking three dogs. I was like, hey, come here. His name was like Scruffles or some shit like that. I don't know. Well, yeah, there's, this area is filled with uh, dogs and babies. It's filled with dogs wearing like $800 sweaters, like cashmere <laughs> sweaters uh, that, you know, it's freezing cold. And I, I could pay for a homeless person to eat for four weeks if they sold the sweater. On my way uh, out, I plan on robbing three dogs. <laughs> <laughs> no, take the sweater and sell it. I'm telling you. you could, oh, no, I don't want the dog. I definitely want the sweater. No, the <laughs> dog, too. The, the dogs are like, a lot of them are like those Sharpays from China uh, that they specially order. People with dogs now, you know, they walk around with that little yuppie plastic bag that fits on their finger to pick up shit. You know, you, you, you're a man and you work hard to go to college and you get a job on Wall Street and you're picking up a dog shit. Uh, these poor guys just have a miserable look on their face while they're walking four babies and everything. Like I got a, I got a sweater dog guy, but I don't got a dog. Like, it's hard to move dogs now. People... Keep up with they, what they, do you mean? They like tag them, like if like they put the things inside of them. Like if you want to sell off a dog, it's hard. But selling what do they a put dog sweater, them? what do they put? They put those chips so they can find a dog if they leave. Like a like a tracking system. Yeah, they track these dogs. They cross oh, oh, them. Oh, okay. Money. In case you get in case someone steal like a lojack. Yeah, they lojack and they dog. They stick it right up their ass or something. I don't know <laughs> where they put it at. They, they lojack these dogs. Oh my god! I find if you just burn a dog with a cigarette, it'll do whatever you want. <laughs> I mean, you could save a lot of that. You burn it with a, a lot of Newport cigarette stains on dogs. You see. Uh, also, here is Joe Matarese. Hey. Joe Matarese uh, and I have a total of 74 years in comedy. Uh, Joe and I have worked quite a bit together over. We've known each other for yeah, at least 20 years. And uh, Joe will be here along with Chris quite a bit. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris, I think, is hilarious. But quite frankly, because of some of the controversy I've had lately, my agent told me to get a black guy. <laughs> Uh, I think it was a good move. Uh, yeah, I mean, and I said, okay, fine. I know a guy that's willing to do it. G- Joe, we, welcome we, to the show. Thanks for having me, yeah. Artie. I'm excited to be part of this. I, yeah. I, I really need to just shit on you for a second, Chris. That's cool. It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Like, you already didn't address that. Like, it's too early. Like, what time would you like to pocket? <laughs> uh, 4.30. It's 1. Yeah. It's yeah. PM. Well, now, he, he, listen, he's on comedian hours, but still, this is, you get up now. I, when I got uh, the job on Howard, you know, I had to get up. You know, five in the morning. Colin Quinn called me up and said, "Art, congratulations! I give you two weeks." <laughs> and I lasted eight and a half years. Three of them on heroin. Yeah. I want to point out, uh, but because it was worth it. I, are, are I you, wasn't getting. I, if it was the Z Morning Zoo, I would not have made it. I just want to say, Chris, are you going to be able to consistently get here this early at one, I'll 1 just, p.m.? I'll just sleep outside the way I usually do when I got it. Like I was here an hour early. I just took a nap in the car. 
I'm all about getting here early. By the way, let's, well, well that, that'll end. I was I was <laughs> like that too at Stern. I was there at four in the morning reading the paper. Before you knew it, I was late every day. Yeah. Uh, this, but, this, uh, this was, I think this is the perfect time, man. I got two kids. Jesus Christ. So I got to, you know, uh, this is great. One o'clock in the afternoon. I think I'm going to be able to make it home to get my son off the bus. That's yeah. my goal. What, what time does that he, happen? He, 3.45. So now we got I'm pressure not there, for that? He's Ooh. just standing on the front lawn. <laughs> Well, the kids are. You see the story about the kid, the seven-year-old girl was in the plane crash today. Kids are smart nowadays. Oh, no, man. tell me. Seven-year-old girl in a Cessna with the rest of her family, and uh, the plane crashes, kills everyone in her family. Seven-year-old girl walks a mile, kind of like the Skinner story. She's yeah. like Artemis Pyle from Skinner. <laughs> she walked uh, a mile and found the house and saved her own life. It said, told the guy that, uh, you know, uh, everybody in her family had just been killed in a plane crash, and she walked there. She made it out. Bloodied of up. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, she made it out. Uh, Sounds like Monroe Martin's story. <laughs> it's foster kid growing up. Who? Monroe. Uh, Who's I'm Monroe? sorry. He's Monroe a comic. Martin Philly comic. comic. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's nothing. Foster you're you're saying I'm like he's Elvis Presley. Huh? <laughs> um, yeah, you're right. It is, it is no to Chris. Him. It's like to Monroe. Chris, that's uh, uh, Elvis. I think I know Monroe. <laughs> you know Monroe. He's a funny guy. Yeah, but I mean, let's not assume. I mean, assume. no one knows him. I mean, we know him. No he's one else a, should know him. But it's not like you're saying Eddie Murphy. I know? mean, if y'all do know him... I, Fuck, you doing too good. Well, <laughs> co- coincidentally, my seven-year-old fell head first down the uh, basement steps this weekend unscathed. Luke? He was playing video games like eight minutes later. Yeah. Strong. He got a bruise on his back and a bruise on like his elbow. I thought for sure we were going to the ER. Yeah. He just all of a sudden... He ate, he got like ADD. He had like his iPad in his hand. Right. And he looked at the iPad and then all of a sudden rolled i mean just head first down 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 wham on the uh, the the basement steps so he's a tough kid i, I mean, guess you know, he is he's a combination of <laughs> well, i don't think he's he comes out of a plane crash though no nah, this house. kid was in a plane crash and and found a house knocked on a door seven-year-old girl I, she was lucky it wasn't prince andrew at the house because <laughs> he would have fucked her <laughs> uh, that's the creepiest story ever prince andrew get laid whatever he wants uh, is uh, paying underage girls to fuck them at a villa in the Caribbean. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, kids are, kids are tough nowadays. I mean, I, I think they're uh, kids smarter, are but... Uh, kids yeah. have always been tough. They're not made out of the same shit that adults are made out of. Kids yeah. are made out of, like, some harder plastic or something No, some like kids that. are pussies. So, I mean, I, I think uh, there's a lot more than you think. Uh-huh. You come from a tough neighborhood, I assume, right? Yeah, I come from a piece of shit place. Yeah, so. this Where guy, do you come from? This guy fights. Um, <laughs> He's got South fight Philly. stories. Yeah, I got, I got tons of fight oh, stories. We all have fight stories. We all have fight stories. Uh, well, cop stories. Listen, I'm 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 pro cop. Uh, you know, I don't want I don't want people am, killing cops. I am I am very pro cop. Believe it or not. Well, okay, let me take off the very. I'm pro cop, but I have <laughs> stories. I have stories, but I no, I do too. Cop. I do too. Listen, I'm gonna tell a story. I'll, I'll tell you a story. Uh, like I'm very pro cop, but this is um this is honest to god true story. And this is when I, the story I'm telling is not about the bad cop that I used to talk about on Howard all the time. This is a cop story. Uh, of a guy who he knew, he worked with. This guy actually had to go to Europe because he accidentally killed a guy drunk in a drunk driving thing. Um, he, we were at a strip club, and he said, "Hey, I gotta, uh, I gotta drive these guys from the uh, the jailhouse to the court. We have to, uh, we have to transfer them." It's God's honest, true story. And uh, I go, "All right." He goes, "You want to come with me? Because uh, uh, I like having company." So we're going in like a paddy wagon. Uh, I go, fine. He goes, wait, I just have to get something. He goes in the back. We had like a locker at the strip club, and he gets a cassette tape. He gets a cassette. And he's looking through cassette tapes. He goes, this will do. This will do. <laughs> so he uh, <laughs> he brings the cassette tape to the paddy wagon. You know, It's four of the toughest-looking black kids you ever saw in your life. They're all handcuffed together, and they're on their way. Uh, it was a drug charge or something. They're on their way to the court. So they, they're like 19 years old. They get in the back of the the paddy wagon and uh they're they're like you know yelling at my friend and everything like fuck you fuck you blah 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 like whatever 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 and uh they sit in the back he gets out of he starts the car he gets out a boom box all right puts in the cassette (laughs) okay puts the boom box right up against the window like like where where the all the black kids could hear it right and uh 
<laughs> like he's going to play a song. And he turns the volume up as loud as he can. A cop actually said this. Before he hit play, he said, I hope you niggers like the Ramones. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. The Ramones. Uh, and, and he hit the play button. I got a button. question. Did he have <laughs> a... He hit the play button, and I Want to Be Zedated came on. Uh, That's a cop said that. Uh, <laughs> did he I have never, a... like, I... I grew up in North I was never so flabbergasted in my life. Like, I couldn't believe it. They, they start screaming, fuck you, fuck you. Fuck. I hope you, and we're like the Ramones. <laughs> and then he blasted, I want to be sedated. <laughs> now, I mean, like, way, uh, now, so only, that's a true story. So I only way to... that could be worse if they were handcuffed human centipede style. That's the only way. <laughs> so when they shit, when they heard the fucking Ramones. Like, I would... I would I, I have worse stories. I have ones. You have I'm, a worse I, one than that. Well, I've been the black. Well, guy that wasn't in the story, physical. So. Well, that wasn't physical. But still, that is like, like those guys. Like you would, I would. If I was one of those guys, I would have speed dialed my lawyer. Oh, there's said, no, there's no lawyer. There's nobody to call. When you're but in other words, in other words, as pro cop as I am, like I tell that story for a reason because if I heard a situation where that guy, that cop, was involved in something that might be racial. How could I not think, you know, the the guy, you know, used racism came into play right. in his decision making? How could I not think that? After I, I mean, that is like, I mean, really, that went through me, that, you know. I mean, because you had that, you had that moment in your life where you realize, oh, some cops are just dicks, and like for some reason, people live in these bubbles where they never seen anybody do anything wrong. Of any authority, and they right. say, "Well, it doesn't happen because it's never happened to me." So I was like, yeah, "Shut your mouth!" And well, like, what's a story? What's a story you could tell that's worse than that? I, oh man, I have tons of words. I have a, a very low grade story. I just told her, uh, t- "Which one did I not tell?" I'll tell the first care. time I got just hit. Yeah, I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll tell this one. This quick. Yeah, you're right, not uh, going to offend us now. You know, no, I'm not about offense. This is just fast. Uh, they pulled me and my four friend. Literally, we just pulled off from my house. We were right around the corner. A cop pulled us over. Uh, I'm in the back passenger seat. Right. right at, back passenger. So he asked for license registration. Then the other cop on the other side comes to me and says, Light, uh, you, I need your license. I said, I don't have a license. I'm 18. I didn't bring a license out, you know, which is reasonable. Right. And then he, he says, well, give me a social. And I, Is that a security number? Yeah. He, right. he can run. And I yeah. literally said, I said, why do you need my social? And my friend just started nudging me. I'm like, I'm like, no, 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 this is fucking wrong. You can't ask me for my fucking... There's nothing in your in your computer that can, you can even put this in. Like, you can't use this. And He's trying to get you a credit card. It is all the shit I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, what what's when his motive? I don't know. Okay. Uh, want to see I, how black knows? you were. Who, who knows? And, but they keep nudging. <laughs> Sir, how black are you? Give me my your social. Course. I'm going to run this. Yeah, this credit sucks. So, so what happened? Guy's coming downtown. Um, uh, long story short, uh, the reason why my friend was nudging me, because come to find out one of my friends had a gun in the car, didn't know that at all. Oh, well. Shut me. See, but they didn't know that either. They were just being racist pricks. Right. But this is the funny part. They got out, they searched us all, somehow did not find the gun that was under the seat. It was a twenty two. He kept sliding back and forth, didn't find it. Uh, and we pulled off and went to Fridays, and they was like, dude. You should have shut the fuck up. We went to Fridays? We went to Fridays. um, So they weren't even good cops. They missed the... Oh, they were horrible, shitty cops. They just wanted to harass some kids. By the way, I want to point out, though, I want to point out, though, by the time we got to the courthouse, it was clear (laughs) that they liked the Ramones. They did. (laughs) They really did. They're growing. It's very very hard to not like them. I love that he picked the Ramones. It's hilarious. He was looking... I I started to think (laughs) of what happened leading up to that, and I started putting... He was looking through cassettes, and he found the cassette, went this will be perfect <laughs> like I, and I don't know what he meant by it at the time what part of Jersey were you in uh, this is uh, central Jersey <laughs> yeah. this is just south of, you know what it was it was in a town called <laughs> New Jersey uh, which I, I, was from, <laughs> from well, when you, I would say Philly's probably more racist right even more racist well, the closest I've ever been, closest I've ever been to a clan meeting is the upper deck at the vet yeah, that, oh, yeah. that it's is just different. It's just is different nuts. style of racism. The Jersey racism is like uh, they keep it in the house. It's like yeah, they're not coming in here. Like Philly is like uh, we live around them. They can come on our block. You know what I mean? Like mm. they can walk past the front door. Yeah, 
They oh, really? Is yeah. that, uh, they can walk past the front door. <laughs> they can walk past our front door. Did, did you ever have a situation where you brought someone home from another race? Or, uh, oh, my and, family and didn't give a fuck. But, but, uh, oh, my, my grandmother had a problem. Oh, it's been With an interracial? I brought a Puerto Rican girl to a wedding, Ooh. and they were like, she's black. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she's just dark. Right. Did you try the Sicilian thing? Sometimes she, that she works. <laughs> I've had to leave a couple of my uh, Italian friends. Uh, well, I had to leave two homes early. Before Daddy came home, did really? you really? Mm-hmm. It was uh, when I was in the South Philly. What uh, I was out. There was one kid. We just over there. We didn't have school. Playing the Super Nintendo, and he was like, he was like, "Yo, you gotta leave at two thirty because my dad gets home <laughs> at three. And we was like, "Why we gotta leave? Because he doesn't like black people." He was like, "Well, he was up That's front. To the point, yeah." Well, let <laughs> so, me ask you this: so Tell me if this is racist. I'm just being honest. This this thought popped into my mind. Tell me if this is racist. But I, I couldn't help, but it came to my mind. The, one of the hottest chicks I ever fucked from being in show business mm-hmm. was a Playboy lingerie model. She was blonde, and uh, I met her when I was doing the sitcom for Norm, the Norm show. I met her through a mm-hmm. friend of mine, introduced me to her. And she just wanted to get on television. So I did the, a full court. She was a fucking nine. I did a full court press with this chick. I took, her, I took her to the, uh, <laughs> the, um, the Warner Brothers lot where we shot the show, and uh, I took her on a full tour of the Warner Brothers <laughs> lot in... Uh, that was a guitar. Ah, that was a guitar. Cool. Uh, I took her a full tour of the lot, you know, with the, uh, the old Western town and everything. And they shot Friends there. They shot ER there and everything. Right. And um, uh, we, we went out for about four weeks. And I banged her like about four or five times. And uh, really, really smoking chick. So one day, um, she's at my condo in L.A. And I had a huge bet on the giant game. But I'll get to gambling later. I, I fell off the gambling wagon. I'll get to that later. I, yeah, no, uh, I noticed. Uh, but, but um, yeah. I so, read your tweets. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, the Giants, you know, in L.A., the, the giant game started at 10 a.m. Uh, you know, one obviously with a time difference. So now I got this broad sitting and laying in my bed at like 9. And I'm going, I got to get the fuck out of here because I want to go and watch the game. So I say to her, listen, uh, do you mind? Can we get out of here? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, she's like, oh, I'm sorry. And she was real cool about getting rushed out. She was, she was like a, a, a well-trained whore, basically. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, sir. She was, yeah, so, so we go to, I said, I'll, I'll buy you breakfast first. So we go, we get breakfast at this little cafe. So we're eating, and she goes, what's the big rush, if you don't mind me asking? And I said, well, you know, uh, I'm a big Giant fan, and the Giant <laughs> game starts soon. And she goes to me, oh, one of my best friends is on the Giants. So I'm like, oh, she's fucking a Giant. <laughs> she's fucking one of them. A chick like this is not best friends without fucking a Giant, right? Uh, uh, now, I don't know if she was fucking this Giant, but I'm just assuming it, okay? So uh, I'm like, in my head, I'm going, she's fucking one of the Giants. So, and I, I, I'm sorry for thinking this, but it popped into my head. I go, uh, which Giant? And in the... Second, it took her to answer about 50 times. I said, please be a white guy. Please be a white guy. Please, <laughs> please be, be a white guy. I, I couldn't help it. It's just like, please be a white guy. Because I, I don't want to. Listen, to me, guy. this is this isn't racism. It's racism when you think someone's inferior to you because of their race. This is a direct opposite. Right. I thought he was better than me. because exactly. I don't want to follow up. <laughs> Positive <laughs> racism is fine. Right, exactly. I really believe that. So, I don't so, want to follow I'm, certain black guys. Right. So I, I, say, please, <laughs> I say, please be a white guy. Please be a white guy. Please be a white guy. So. She starts to answer me, and it was like she said it in slow motion. She said, Pepper Johnson. (laughs) (laughs) Pepper, like, Johnson. (laughs) And I went, oh, my God. Like, like, I mean, the black, like, Chris, you're very dark. (laughs) You you look like Brian Gumbel compared (laughs) to Compared to uh, Pepper John. So I, I'm like, oh shit. And then I dropped her off and uh, I never saw her again. <laughs> <laughs> she kept calling. I think I changed my number. Uh, I, I, uh, I fucked I, her four times. I figured I got the win. But again, now I don't know if for sure she was fucking Pepper John. She claimed to be friends with him. I, I'm more interested in, I, I don't know why this call. It just took, <laughs> I took interest in hearing the full court press. <laughs> Because every com- uh, comedians to get laid, you mean the full yes. girl, yeah? I, I, yeah. She was. I took it. That Warner Brothers lot was a closer, man. I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, how many girls did that work on? Yeah, a lot? a lot. Well, listen, for me, when you look like me, you need the Warner Brothers lot. <laughs> 
<laughs> when you look like me, you need the one of I That had an old Western town where they shot like High Noon. Literally, Friends, ER, <laughs> fucking uh, the Ray Romano was shot around there. And then we had the Norm show. Literally, me and Norm would be playing catch sometimes outside our stage. Uh, and we were on stage 12. And we'd hear the, the, the tour coming. The, the celebrity, they go, that's where they shoot Friends. Ah, that's where they shoot ER. Ah, that's where they shoot Ray Romano. And then we get this, and they go, and that's stage 12. <laughs> <laughs> What, what about us? We shoot. Was, me and Norma play this, and that's stage 12. We're shooting now. <laughs> no one cares. You could be in the scene if you want. <laughs> like, like they, they didn't recognize. But yeah, so but it's honestly, fun. they were shooting a perfect storm, the movie, the perfect storm on uh-huh. stage 16. They, they, uh-huh. And we snuck in to watch it. They dug out a big hole in the ground and put a boat in the, in the hole uh, and to shoot, uh, you know, scenes in the boat that were they couldn't shoot on the water Mm -hmm. and so uh, Mark Wahlberg was always there so while I'm on the golf cart with her Mark Wahlberg is on his cell phone and he's on a break and she looks at him and she goes oh wow Mark Wahlberg and trying to be a tough guy I go he's a fucking jerk off (laughs) and 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 she goes oh wow he's he's cool enough to call Mark Wahlberg a jerk I look over and he's looking at me and I'm saying, oh my God, did he hear me? He read your lips. <laughs> but I'm, I was afraid he heard me and I'm like, what if he comes over here and beats me up and just fucks her in front of me? <laughs> <laughs> Which she, he clearly could have done. <laughs> he clearly could have beat me up and fucked. Yes. I mean, she would have fucked him in a heartbeat. <laughs> that LA thing where someone's more famous than you, like, like uh, we, we were trying to do this bit. We have a friend who's a great closer with chicks. The, the stand-up bit we were trying to write oh, on the oh, road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever do it then? No, I didn't, the do, I, didn't, didn't, I didn't do it. Do it. We, we have a friend who closes. Uh, he's always he's a good-looking guy, and he's always able, he can pick up a chick with a look just by looking at her. Mm-hmm. And he's the kind of guy, he's a good friend, but you could be telling him the most tragic story about your life. Yeah, my aunt's got cancer, blah, blah, blah. And if he sees a hot chick behind you, you'll notice he's just looking over your shoulder. He's drifting. <laughs> like, yeah, he's, dr- he's drifting, like, oh, what is that? And the L.A. version of that is if someone sees a more famous person than you. And that's what she was doing. Right. She was like, I'm on a golf cart with Tubby here, <laughs> who's the fifth lead of the number 88 show on ABC, <laughs> and Mark Wahlberg there, and you know, she, was, she was drifting on him. <laughs> he was drifting. I love the Arnie Full that Court Press. Press. Uh, 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 right here, black right here. Guy, black I, guys have a great way of putting things. That's why black guys are cooler. Like, like I, I've been trying to think of a good way to put that, and you said she was drifting. Like she that's was drifting. Like, right. the, 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 the rapper Chub Rock. Okay, mm-hmm. I had you know Chub Rock. Is? Yeah, I know Chub Rock. Okay, I had a night. I had a night, right. I had a night out with him. Me and Orla- Orlando Jones. <laughs> Orlando Jones was my roommate at Mad TV. Uh, so I lived with a black guy for a year, right? So you motherfuckers. Right? Was he close? So, uh, was he a good closer? Orlando? Oh. Orlando Jones. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The white pussy that guy got. Do you know how many times we lived in a loft? We lived in a loft in downtown LA. You know how many times I'm watching biography on A&E in the loft and he's fucking like a hot blonde? Uh, you know, uh, really annoyed me. But um, <laughs> but a nice guy. So, uh, so uh, he brings Chubb Rock around. One night, I, he he stayed with me Christmas. Yeah, I even let him stay with me Christmas. Chubb Rock needed to stay with you. No, Orlando. Uh, oh, with okay. <laughs> so he goes, "Hey, my friend Chubb Rock," and I was a fan of that song. Treat him right. He goes, "Chubb Rock's living at the Chelsea Hotel. Uh, we'll go pick him up, and he's going to come out with us." And we we're going down to this comedy club, Luna Lounge. We we're going to it's right. an alternative comedy club. I had a set down there. This is like you were two. This is like 1995. <laughs> I just found out you were born in 87. You were eight years old, literally, when this, uh-huh. the night this happened. So me, so Chubb Rock is living at the Chelsea Hotel, which already makes him cool as hell. And he uh, he comes down. He gets in the car. Orlando introduces. Him. Now a white guy would say he knows Orlando was a vegan vegetarian, and I guess Orlando had taken him to a bunch of places where you can't get meat. Mm-hmm. And uh, he realized this. So a white guy would say, like, you know, hey, is there going to be meat down there? Or, you know, can I get a steak or something? <laughs> Chubb Rock goes, yo, is there food for carnivores up on this motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. I mean, like, like only a black guy, like a white guy would have like, it was, it's one of the coolest things I've ever, yo, is any, yo, is any food for carnivores up on this motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> and a food for carnival. The way he said carnivores. <laughs> carnivores up in his motherfucking. He and he so we got have a velociraptor. <laughs> <laughs> but when you said drifting, remind Drift. we have a whole great night out. Now uh, I had my mother Stunderberg as I was away, uh, uh, back from the West Coast visiting, 
And uh, Orlando, of course, picks up some chick. He's not with us at the end of the night. So Chubb Rock says, yo, man, I got a, a recording session. And, you know, the people would uh, rent out uh, from midnight to like 6 in the morning because they got a cheap thing, you know. Mm. So it's 5 a.m. And he goes, can you drop me off? It was on Great Jones in the East Village. I remember that. So I pull up. And this is the last thing Chubb Rock said to me. I haven't seen him since. <laughs> he goes, you want to come in? And I'm like, no. And we chat a little bit. And he gives me, and he, and he, and he shakes my hand. And he goes, um... He shakes my hand and <laughs> he goes, okay, I'm going to drop some lyrics for this nigga. I haven't that seen him since. the last you heard of Chubb Rock. The first thing he said was, uh, is there any food for carnivals? Up on his mouth? Like, okay, I'm going to drop some lyrics for this nigga. <laughs> and Chubb it was Rock is the coolest motherfucker ever. He really was. And that song, Treat Him Right, is uh, 1990, Chubb Rock on the scene. with the, like, like the way, what do they call it, flow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Flow. flow. Yeah, he, was, he was nice. Chubb, Chubb had a nice flow. I nice love Chubb flow. Rock. Like, but when <laughs> no. you said drift, like a black guy says drip. A friend of mine, uh, John Viner, who writes for the Family Guy, now I'm name dropping. Oh, he yeah. uh, he had a bit about You're name how, dropping with a guy yeah. nobody knows. No, yeah. He he basically he had a bit about how black, <laughs> black guys can't have shitty names. What do you mean? He's like, yo, man. He's like Eugene's like Eugene <laughs> or, or or E. <laughs> Eugene will be E. He has like a whole e, bit of E or Gene. You give can't a, give a black guy a shitty yeah. name. He will just cool it. I, I will call him <laughs> Eugene. Yo, Eugene. Yo, it's Eugene. Eugene. <laughs> call me E. Is he a stand-up? He, uh, he did stand-up for a little while. He does it yeah. here and there, but he's more of a writer. He's like one of Seth MacFarlane's like right hand. Oh, man, okay. Actually. He's, oh, all right. Well, that, that he's probably got cash too. He's doing. Does he very got points well. in that shit? Got any, oh, is there yeah. any food for carnival? Well, you were mentioned Han- <laughs> uh, your your buddy uh, Jimmy Palumbo was mentioning uh, Hancock Park. He lives in Hancock Park. At this that's an old house. money place. And uh, Ellen DeGeneres lived in Hancock Park. I read that in the paper, and uh, Portia de Rossi uh, uh, was out there like uh, yelling and shit recently. Well, was, uh, about something, and I'm like. Uh, if your face was buried in Ellen DeGeneres' pussy for six years, you'd be crazy, too. I, I wanted to tell you my pathetic full-court press. This is how pathetic. Go ahead. Because I, I love... Well, listen, again, I'm admitting I needed this to get... And it, I think, this chick was hot, who was I, maybe fucking Pepper John. Yeah, well, when a <laughs> girl's like... Yeah, Pepper yeah, because that's when I did it. Pepper my, Johnson. Because I remember a girl in an acting class was like a 10, and I was the like... The story's I'm, already bullshit. <laughs> I ended up dating this girl for like six months, but I remember the first time we hooked up, I was so paranoid. She found out I was a stand-up comic during right. the first class. She goes, oh, when are you performing? And I go, I actually have a set tonight. And I was, I didn't think she'd say I'll come. Mm. She goes, oh, I'll come. So risky. And I had an, ele- I had an 11 o'clock at the comic show. <laughs> Ooh. So this is how old and pathetic it was. I had a cassette tape in the car of me destroying. I played it on the way to the oh, set. Jesus Christ. Dude, to, that's, to cover that's me. a bit much. Because if the chick's hot, she's seen every move, and it's probably like pathetic to her. You know? nah, she was 21. She didn't know the moves yet. She was young. <laughs> They they learn the moves quick. Do they? Hot, hot chicks learn the moves. I don't quick. I don't know what's oh. going on with anything. Uh, I remember I brought she's her. She's drifting. The, she was drifting. I brought her to the comic strip once, and dude, and Sherrod Small and Tony Rock were That's like a, on her like you. I was like I was Sherrod. I was you don't like, bring broad around. Oh, you got too, you got two hard clothes. Just just hovering. A Sherrod is like in your face. <laughs> You'd think you look like Billy D. Williams, Sherrod, with uh, the confidence he has. Dude, <laughs> that's funny. So what happens? And Tony Rock, you know. Tony, yeah. They still bring it up to this day. They're did like, you, oh, did we you... remember you brought that girl around that time. Well, what happened? They didn't. I was. I ended up banging her for like six months, and right. she dumped me on Valentine's Day. I'll never forget it. For Tony Rock. I, I, had, I never <laughs> had this. Where I had sex with her two or maybe three times the day before, and she dumped me the next day, Valentine's Day. And I know... I just remembered this story. Was she dating Carl Banks? She had no. Her her parents had this house in the mountains, right? They were loaded on top of her. You being fucked her there, you bastard. <laughs> I, I went to the house in the mountains with the family, right? And this girl was out. She's outside with her father shooting guns at at cans. The chick shit. was shooting. Yeah, guns? she was shooting that, guns. That, that's kind of sexy, though. Chick. It, yeah. <laughs> it is actually. <laughs> and I had never shot a gun in my life, yeah. so I'm in, and I'm a major. What pussy. kind of gun was it? it the, well, that, I can't tell you because that's going to kill the story. Oh, okay. Really? But, that's going to kill us. Well, it was a tw- they were I guess it was a 22 hand. Story gun. was killed like, like, 10 minutes. What, what was underneath your friend's seat was they were yeah, shooting in the back. I, I need it for visual. I need it just so I can I'm adding it all up to 22 it like can it can it can it be can it look like it a lo- 
Rock if it's 22? You lost me on the story of Tony Rock. (laughs) (laughs) No, go ahead. So I'm inside, you know, and I'm notoriously horrendous with, like, if you take me on a roller coaster. No, like, anything loud throws my equilibrium off like you wouldn't believe. (laughs) So I go outside because I'm thinking while I'm inside, oh, that looks fun. Because inside it just sounds like. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Right. So I go outside. And uh, I go, hey, can I can I try it? And stupid me, I hold the gun sideways. Oh, Jesus Christ. And I start talking shit to the tree. You think you're Bruce tree. Willis? Yes. Uh, I start talking shit to the tree. Yippee ki yay Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker. But right, but honestly, you're not supposed to hold a sideways. Can't no. it, like, backfire? Not a 22, 22s but yeah. 22s are like BB guns. Yeah. This is how much of a pussy I am. I click Chris it. Chris knows all the gun. I, cl- <laughs> I click it. It's so loud that it throws my equilibrium off and I <laughs> fall down Jesus in front of her and that's her, the and game her you might as well suck the cock <laughs> you should have just blew her father <laughs> so, <laughs> it would have been, so, been less gay if you blew her father <laughs> fell in deep throat of her, her, her slow brother right <laughs> go, go, go. I can't get up go. <laughs> Frank some <beans. laughs> Never forget that. <laughs> I'm at I'm, I'm at dinner with the whole family. Like uh, a half hour later, with this <laughs> sound uh, in my ear, uh, I broke. Dump me the next day. I was da- I was dating a chick. I broke a thumb once, and I couldn't wipe my ass with my right hand. And I took a shit at her apartment, which was the worst thing you could do. Uh, and it's so I tried to wipe my ass with my left hand, and my <laughs> equilibrium got thrown off from it. And I like fell. I hit my head on her. Fell in the toilet. <laughs> Because I, try, I tried to wipe my ass with my left hand. I couldn't even, like, fuck me up. These are some of the best uncoordinated white stories I've heard in a while. <laughs> I, I, I I I sorry, Muggsy Chris... Bogues over here. <laughs> I want to hear the Chris Cotton full court for us. Uh, I, what, what I would be a... I have a full court. You don't have a move? I'm, I'm so out. The... I've been so out for so long, and I I got in so early. I don't think I even have a move. I just you Well, know... you're, you're married. I'm and married you've been like married a long time. First of all, is it hard being a black guy named Cotton? No, no one. You know, it's cool yeah, as shit. Kind of I'm mean, with you. It's cool as shit, though, because <laughs> it's, I've never like like uh, uh, unless I'm with my dad and my brothers. I always know somebody's talking to me. Very easy. <laughs> It was I up that name. It's a dope name, for, especially for the stage. Chris Cotton is a great name. Yeah, but it's got a bad, bad, you know, connotation. I mean, it got shit, I mean, no one gave you shit growing up with the last They tried, but I was... You were fucking, quick. Yeah, I was quick. I was quick. You, you, were, you were this size, probably. I was... I you was, told me you yeah, beat the I was pretty, shit out I'm of guys. Pretty, yeah, I was pretty big. <laughs> I got into a nice... A, a so nice you, don't have, you don't have a move because you got in early... I think I, I had moves. I don't know if they... Even are in context due to the fact that I, I got out so early. Yeah, no, I hear you. So, but I do, I do have. This is the funniest shit ever. I stay in an apartment with it's me and three other comics when I'm in. in that the sounds York. like a blast. Oh, it, it has this moment. Sherrod and Tony Rock. Funny. <laughs> Just oh my, uh, one of my roommates. You, his name is Reggie Conquest. Doesn't matter, but uh, I'll give him that. Monroe Martin and John Viner. You guys are really <laughs> breaking out the eight list. <laughs> I'm. I don't want to name drop, but Reggie Conquest. Now, uh, <laughs> but one day he's over, so he's fucking this chick in the back room. I'll sleep in the living room, just so you know. I sleep in the fucking living room in a, in a futon. He's fucking this chick in the back room. Oh. But before he started fucking her, we have this uh, group text we had, like me and all the comics we cool with. So he's literally just sent the group text out, like, yeah, something, suck my dick, something, da da da. da. All of a sudden, I hear, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> right? Then all of a sudden, 40 seconds later, I see, yeah, pussies. I'm like, he is right back <laughs> on it. <laughs> it was the funniest Maybe was, he might have been texting her while he was Oh, no, that. he was done. I could, after that, he was just full blown right back in like nothing happened. Oh, oh, I was just, it was one of the, I mean, I, now I just tease him whenever it chicks over. Like, I don't hear anything. I don't uh, fuck with him on the group text. I got, but I, I want to introduce uh, Jimmy. Uh, I, got, I got one more racist story about a kid I grew up with. Uh, Irish kid I grew up with. His mother used to have holy water on the side of the door. I actually told the story on Howard, I think. Uh, uh, and she used to bless yourself with the holy water before you left the house. <laughs> Literally. She would get holy water from church. So we go out to play stickball, and she go, bless yourself, you know, the name of the father and the son. Mm. So I'm about 12 years old. His older brother was a degenerate gambler. So he's watching a, a Nick game he's got a bet on. Four feet from the holy water. We're walking out the door. And uh, the woman goes, bless yourself. So I go, all right. I bless. I, I, I get the holy water on my hands. I go, in the name of the Father. So when I get to the son, his older brother screams at the TV, shoot, nigger! <laughs> <laughs> Scream 
is it the TV? I'm at the father, the son. Shoot! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, and the, the mother doesn't bat an eye because she was, like, insanely, like, the most hypocritical. Just, you know, you got to mix. Why is he shooting, baby? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, when you grow funny. up like that, and uh, you know, uh, it's, 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 you really got to be enlightened. You got to go out in the world and find out that uh, all that was wrong. <laughs> Until you see your buddy who's a cop, an authority. No, but so my point of telling that story is like, I, 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 I like to be pro cop, but I'm not an idiot. I realize, and you can't. You, you it, it, listen. It's got to. I guarantee it's way harder for a black guy to be around cops. I, I mean, it's just got to be a different situation uh, yeah. how often does that happen uh, do you think where i mean i mean it depends on where you at it depends on where you if you're in a shitty neighborhood it's fucked up now this, this is what i say when i go to other cities i'm that i'm that adjusted to shitty neighborhoods right so right. when i go out i'll go out to like like joe had he was with me when we stopped there i like to find the shittiest area and still go party here because i feel extremely comfortable there I am like, not. We don't. Yeah, I, I am very comfortable. <laughs> so I'll go into the club, whatever the party, whatever it is, and I'll be. I'll feel comfortable. But the second I leave out, I feel way more uncomfortable if there's cops outside. Oh yeah, <laughs> because I'm like they're going to hurt from somebody. the shitty neighborhood. Oh yeah, so yeah. I'll leave out like 15 minutes. As soon as I see if I see the cops pull up, I I leave like 15. What about a black cop? That's an ambivalent. Oh, that's not a good thing. Sometimes yeah. Yeah. it depends on if it's black cop and black cop. You might get lucky and they might be cool, but if you get like black cop and white cop, you're fucked. Now, what is your opinion on Ferguson? What did you? What is your? What do you think about that kid, Michael Brown? What do you Mike think? Brown? I have very. This is how I feel about it. this. It's going to sound crazy, and some people going to say, but I feel like mistakes was made on both sides, right? And everything was so inconclusive with the evidence because everybody it was it was all testimony one sided. You know what I mean? And then right. and the other testimony they, they brought for they just ignored that shit. You know what I mean? Now uh but I will say this one fact he didn't have to shoot that many times. No. Well, like like at a certain point you fucking you gotta you gotta pull but back. But do you think he had to shoot once? I don't I don't he was feel justified like the, in shooting at all. I don't feel like the shot was needed, but uh but I'm not gonna sit there and nitpick over that. I feel like if you're gonna shoot you shoot you shoot enough till you have to stop. You know what I mean? Like you you could have stopped at three shots. That would have made sense. Three shots opposed to seven is right. a big fucking you know, difference. No, you know? it is. It is. But, but you know what hammers it home for me is the video of Michael Brown in the in the convenience store, man. That kid took what he wanted. I mean, I think, you know, and he was a big, big kid. I agree with you that it was probably too much, but I think uh, he had to defend <coughs> him. The cop had to defend himself. I mean, that that's, that's why I'm like, everything's so inclusive. I, I mean, that story... It's like it's not cut and dry. Eric Gardner, ugh, that shit's pretty ugly. Uh, yeah, well, you can't good. really that's argue that. Video. Well, listen, yeah. I don't. Again, I, here's my argument with that. Clearly, the guy wasn't trying to kill him, but like, what? So, what's the proper punishment for that cop? Well, what should should that cop be uh, away for the rest of his life? I don't think so. Should he be punished on some level? Maybe, but uh, is he trained wrong? Like Bratton says, they're gonna they have to retrain these guys. Or? Hit us with some old school lies on this one. Like hit us with an old school trick. Indict him and then cover it like you do. Like that's what it was. Everybody was just pissed that they didn't even lie to. Like at least give. Like it's like if you're cheating on your girlfriend and she catches you and you're doing it blatantly. She goes, at least you could have fucking gave me the, right. the dignity, just lying to me. You know what I mean? They didn't even fucking lie. They didn't act like they gave a fuck. It was like, oh, no, we're not indicting him either. Uh -huh. It's like, indict him and then cover it and then let him go, whatever. But at least indict him, just the bullshit. You the, know who's going the down public. is the, the Cleveland cop. And right yeah. when we saw it, because he, he shot that kid in two seconds. Dude. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 and he's got a history of being mentally ill. That's the other problem. Who wants to be a cop in Cleveland? They're hiring mentally ill people now because, I mean, who wants to be a fucking cop being in a Cleveland, cop, man? Being oh. a cop in general, I'm I'm never going to sit there and be like, oh, fuck him. He made a mistake. That's why I said it was too many shots, but I feel like you're in that moment, dude, and you're fucking working. You're Listen, out there. I can't, I can't argue with that. I either. love the, I ar I love the argument. Be a cop for two weeks in a, in a bad yeah. city, and you tell me how you feel. That being said, you know, there's stories like my, buddy, like my buddy's friend who, you know, uh, who ended up, you know, getting his come up and she had to leave the country, that guy, because he got involved in some, you know, I won't get into, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, you should. <laughs> anyway, um all right. So uh, the other guy who's here uh with me is one of my oldest buddies uh in 
I met uh, Jimmy through comedy. Technically, we did a dinner theater play uh, that we got paid 40 bucks a night for, <laughs> uh, plus tips, in 1991 when Chris was seven. Oh, Jesus uh, and uh, I feel like I've known Jimmy since I was two years old. He's a really funny guy, uh, does some stand-up, a great, great actor. He's been on Friends and uh, Drew Carey, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Jimmy, Jimmy calls it Curb, which makes you want to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> when he casually throws that in. You know, I, I was on Curb. And, uh, <laughs> like, like what, what, what rush are you in where your enthusiasm can't be said? Like, when you're in a hurry, you're in a hurry to go. Uh, uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's introduce Jimmy Palumbo. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, buddy? I represent the pre Mad TV Artie Lang here. Right, right. Yeah. exactly. That was a that was a fun that was a fun Artie Lang. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's when you were only uh, you only drank tequila. That's always fun when you're a broke cokehead. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's was... nothing worse than knowing I know a you broke before cokehead. I know you before coke. That's when you were in the tequila years. Well, you, you were a tequila yeah. guy. Oh, oh my God! Look, uh, talk about an embarrassing story. <laughs> Just I, I, I talk about an embarrassing story. I was 18 years old, and my buddy moved out of his um, uh, parents' house when he was 18, and he had his own little apartment. And I would uh, drive over there, and I'd stop at the liquor store and get whatever I needed uh, to go there and drink. So one day, I'm with my mother. I, I took my mother to the supermarket to help her with the bags and stuff. We park. <laughs> The guy who manages and run works the cash register of the liquor store sees me right in front of my mother. He points at me and goes, "Tequila man!" <laughs> <laughs> I'm 18. My mother goes, "Is that your nickname? <laughs> <laughs> Is that your nick, Tequila man? Is that your nickname?" I, That's funny. I did a voiceover with Artie and. There was a, a, a clinging noise that the producer couldn't figure out where it was coming from. Oh. And that's because Artie had a vat of tequila in a glass, <laughs> and the tequila glass was hitting the microphone <laughs> while he was talking. Yeah. And then instead of being yelled at and screamed and kicked out, the guy just said, Artie, can, just, just give me the shot of tequila. It's, it's, it's affecting the well, voice over Well, you're going to find a guy at 2 in the morning who sounds like Greg Wall. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, Artie drank tequila. Well, that's the guy. We, we're going to take a, a break here. Uh, uh, that, that's the gang. That's the, uh, this uh, hopefully might be the core group. Uh, but um, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I'm, uh, I want to uh, thank you all for being a part of this. Um, and we're going to see what happens. I really want to say uh, thank you to the people who have signed up so far. The people who have signed up so far are fucking hardcore fans, man. So for you people listening right now, I love you. I, I really do. You're, you're good fans. and We're going to try to do good shows for you. And this is the vibe it's going to be. Stories, laughing, having a good time. Rod from Bayside, if you uh, listened or watched my direct TV show, uh, you know Rod was our phony phone call guy. Him and his smoking hot girlfriend, Marcy, are here. And uh, Rod has brand new phone calls that he made. We'll play some of his old classic ones and some new ones uh, when we come back as well. Rod, welcome uh, to the program. Great to be here. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And Marcy, uh, uh, welcome. Marcy's in on the act. He made her make a couple of phony phone calls. Hi. How Hi. are you? <laughs> Marcy is adorable, by the way. And uh, Rod looks like, uh, in the words of Woody Allen, something uh, something you might find in a live bait shop. <laughs> uh, James Flippin's here. James, also from the Direct TV show. James is a co-producer. That's what I call him. Tech guy extraordinaire. James, I love you. Thanks for being here. He's going to be here every day. And, of course, Chicago Dan Filato, who uh, nursed me back to health after pancreatitis. I'll get into that. I'll get into my gambling. I'll get into baloney-titted Chris Christie, the big baloney-titted <laughs> motherfucker who let Jerry Jones motorboat his big fucking traitor tits. Uh, fucking ass wipe, dick face, cunt rag <laughs> from Jersey, North Jersey. He's from Livingston, New Jersey. You know who's from Livingston, New Jersey? Chelsea Handler, another baloney titted cunt. Uh, yeah, uh, the, f- l- there's nothing but dickheads from Livingston, New Jersey. And this dickhead grows up 10 miles, uh, a line from Beerly, 10 miles from Giant Stadium, and he's a fucking cowboy fan. He can go fuck himself. We'll get into that. We'll get into my fa- the fact that I won I, I had with Detroit, the uh, Detroit covered. Uh, and, uh, and I hit the over on the safety in the Steelers game, so I am back gambling, which means it'll all fall apart how, soon. So, how much did you win in your uh, Stuart Scott polls? Huh? Huh? Ooh, too soon? 
What'd you say? Too soon. What you, <laughs> I didn't even hear what you said. Well, how how did you win your, your Stuart Scott poll? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Stuart Scott, listen, I, I have to admit I always hated him. I'm, I'm sorry the guy died, but he annoyed the shit out of me. But, I mean. Uh, nice guy, though, I guess, right? I guess. All right. Yeah. All right. I like that. Anyway, Dan liked it. I was a fan. Dan, I'm a, I'm a good dick. guy, right? Anyway, I'm, I'm happy. Guy. I'm Great guy. Good guy. I'm sorry to see him go. Um, and, uh, yeah, 49 is, uh, that's, that's young. But uh, <laughs> good vibe so far. Dan Filato, I love you. And we're watching on CNN right now, Baloney Titted, Chris Christie. Jerry Jones fucking gives him the high hat, too. He goes to do a double high five to Jerry Jones. Ugh. Jerry Jones is hugging some other guy who he probably fucks 16-year-olds with. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. All right, we're going to take our first break. Uh, it's been fun so far. We come back, some phony phone calls and some more fun. The Artie Lang, Artie Quitter Podcast. <laughs> You already got any food for carnivores up in this motherfucker? <laughs> I can't stop saying that. I'll put myself to sleep saying that. Carnivores. Test, test. Do I have I, a low mic? You realize we're on the Do air, Do I have right? a low mic? Are we? We're doing the show. Oh, yeah. geez. I didn't know we were back. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Fine. That's, that's fine. Good. Testing yeah, one, two, three. Right, testing one, no, two, three. No, we, we don't have to restart. That's fine. I like that. I like the... It's I like, real. It's a yeah, podcast. Yeah, I do. Yeah, really. We don't have to restart. Uh, Joe knows you fucked up, and that's fine. No. Start again. Joe, Joe. No, we're not starting again. I refuse to let us start again. 15 minutes uh, of starting again. Of course, we, uh, people are paying for these memberships. We have, so you're to, have, uh, we have to. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. We have to uh, work quickly here because Luke, uh, of course, is getting home from school. Someone said on your feed, this isn't a podcast. This is a radio show. That's what they said because it's, uh, it's, it's not, you know, once a week. It's, uh, are we calling it a podcast? Well, what else is it? It's a podcast, right? I don't know. What considers it? What's the difference between a radio show and a podcast? You can't. This is not on a radio station. They download it on the internet. Okay. They download it on the internet. Jim, you're not helping. (laughs) You're over there with this fucking Rutgers shirt on. Uh, The Rutgers stuff annoys the shit out of me. Um, All right. let's, Let's get into this Cowboys thing. Because I could not be more livid. I mean, listen, I, I bet that I bet Detroit I got seven, and I covered, so I'm fine, big time. I had three dimes, that's three thousand in the bank. I had the over, uh, five dimes on the over Steelers game the night before. That safety, uh, big cover, so I'm up eight grand. I'm not complaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, with that eight grand, I'll probably be down fifty in a couple of weeks. But um, right now, I have eight grand seed money. But watching Chris Christie, <laughs> watching Chris Christie fucking uh, this jer- the Jersey governor, not a guy from Jersey, the fucking Jersey governor, high five uh, with those baloney tits of his, Ugh. that enormous sweater that the Mets are going to use to fucking tarp the field <laughs> with it was a Met color. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that, that huge magenta. I've never seen so much magenta in a box. Uh, it just... He's high fiving the Cowboys owner. He's the governor of New Jersey, man. At least fake it. You, you, I mean, that's just bad parenting. Bad with those big slacks that he wears with those pleats. Oh, the pleats sweet. and the slacks that are like enormous creases. Uh, who lets those out every fucking day? Didn't he have his stomach stapled? <laughs> yeah, he had, his, he had his stomach stapled. He's How's still eight hundred pounds. Staples are possible. <laughs> He's a rail at 800 pounds now after the stomach stapling. And the best is he goes to double high five Jerry Jones, that fucking dickweed, uh, another asshole. He goes to give him a double high five, and Jones is not even looking at him. And he leaves Christie hanging, which is funny because uh, Christie's out of breath just from putting his arms up in the air. And uh, <laughs> he's like almost throwing up. And he's, I mean, Jimmy, uh, you're a giant fan. To see the governor of New Jersey do that, it, how it's, disgusted are it's you? The whole, plus, the game was making me sick. He's high-fiving. Yeah. He's the governor. He's running for president. Our state's all screwed up. No, dude. It's horrible. He's not but getting thought, my vote. He's not, I'm not voting for that motherfucker. Uh, I will vote. For any, unless it's another black guy, I will vote for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> the move, uh, he's just, the you move. should, you know what? Why can't he sit at some other suite in the background? Listen, he's a cowboy fan. God bless him. He should be able to go to the game 
and sit somewhere. He's I don't think, be, no. I don't, the fact that he's governor of New Jersey, I don't think he's allowed to publicly say he's a Cowboy fan. He should be <laughs> lying. He, he lies about every other fucking thing. He lies about traffic at the George Washington Bridge. He can't say he's a giant fan. <laughs> Fuck him. The fact that you know makes it worse. I dated a girl who fucked Pepper Johnson. That's how much of a fan I am. <laughs> and you were, praying, you were praying it was Steve DiAssi, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't want any steroids there. <laughs> but uh, no, I was going yeah. more for Gary Reason. <laughs> No, yeah, honestly, how sickening is it? How sickening? No, it's it, it, Jim. Your thoughts. The, the, the worst part is <laughs> cowboy. <laughs> Jim, your thoughts. <laughs> cowboy fans hate the Giants, so it's not like if you right. he's a fan of the Vikings and eh, you live in New Jersey, you don't mind. They hate we and hate they each play, other. and they play in Jersey. It's all and I feel and listen uh, to, to some more. Issa, how do you pronounce Issa's last name, Danny? Do you know? Kudis. Issa Kudis, uh, uh, free safety for the Lions. He's from my hometown. Uh, and so I was really rooting for him. He's on the Lions, uh, grew up in Union, New Jersey. Great kid. I had him on my old show. And uh, so I was rooting for him to advance. And the Lions, you know, Detroit fans, I'm so sorry. I mean, Detroit, too. Detroit has no electricity. They could have, you know what I mean? There's entire neighborhoods that are run by pit bulls in Detroit. They could have gotten, uh, an, uh, you know, closer to the championship game. And and they didn't because of a, in my opinion, one of the worst calls a ref has ever made in the postseason. Uh, he made the proper call at first, and he picks it up, picks up the flag. For you to pick up the flag, it has to be definitive the other way. And you got to. We have a, we have a cowboy fan here, James. Listen, maybe you agree with the call the way it ended up, right? But you have to give me if you pick up the flag, it's got to be definitive the other way. And he did not have that. It wasn't definitive the other way. Come well, on. I think everybody now knows what face guarding is, and that's not illegal. But forget the face guarding. What about the contact? He made contact with minimal, the guy. It was minimal contact. But it was contact. He sh- it, 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 he affected him. No, no, it was catching the football. The- Wait, so what is the face guarding? What is that? Explain that to me. What is that rule? You're you're allowed to do it now. You can completely. Just block yeah, a guy's used face, to be even like, when you're back yeah, to the play? Everyone used to think that you have to look back at the ball, but that's not the case anymore. You can just run backwards you can just and run put your hands in As long as you don't shit, touch them. Right. Now, what, say it again, Joe. What can you do? You can just run backwards and wave your hands in the air so the guy can't see the ball coming. In college, it's a, it's a flag. In the pros, it's not. Yeah, really? but I'm not ta- okay. I'm not talking about that part. I agree. I'm talking about the contact he made. Watch it. He he affects him catching yeah, the pass. He 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 called the flag. Now the referees do not huddle every flag and say, "What do you think? You sure about that?" No, they throw the flag. That's it. Done. That's the call. Unless it's like stepping out of bounds, where he says, "No, no, no. I saw his foot. It was out of a." Any of those subjective calls, which right. pass interference it's got is, right to... you can't pick up the flag there. Right. You just can't. And, and if you whether... do, it's got to be so definitive the other way. Whoa, like, whoa, I blew it. To where the flag fell out by mistake. Yeah, oh, the man. whole you crowd's can't... booing. Everybody's no, yelling. No one was saying anything. Why yeah. No, of course not. They, it, was, they... it was the right call. And then he just changes what they made. No sense. And they, plus, the mistake they made, too, they didn't huddle before the guy started marketing it off. I mean, they were either. And then, well, you know what's worse? And no, we haven't talked about this yet. Des Bryant ran out onto the middle of the field. Right. Okay, you know what that is? That's 15 yards, uh, unsportsmanlike conduct, and now they're at the 14. Instead, nobody makes that call. Yeah. Yet the other day, I saw somebody's helmet pop off, and they, and they called a flag on it. You know, because he, he he took off his helmet. Yeah, you cannot run onto the middle of the field. When's the last time you saw a player do that? And not get a penalty? well. In all fairness, Des Bryant also beat up his mother. So I mean, you know, the, the guy you can't trust anything that guy. <laughs> You know. Hey, don't hate the game, hate the player. <laughs> I'm just going to do Stuart Scott quotes. I thought it was the other way around. I thought it was the other way around. <laughs> we should, Is that we your tribute to Stuart Scott? Yeah, I, I literally fucking up, up a quote. That guy was as cool as the other side of the pillow. <laughs> I literally looked up Stuart Scott quotes while they were talking. I'm just going to talk when about Stuart Scott. Scott when Stuart Scott would get black, it, it, like you know, when Oprah would try to do that thing, like, oh, "Hey, girlfriend," you know, throw that in. Yeah. When he would do that, oh god, booyah! Oh, so oh, booyah! I wanted to call. <laughs> I, when he would say booyah, I would say not only do I hate this. What's stopping me from driving to Bristol, Connecticut, and caving in <laughs> the side of his face with a fungo bat? Like, what, like, like what is stopping me from doing that? Because like gravy on a biscuit, it's all good. But you see, again, another great saying. <laughs> it's cool as the other side of the <laughs> pillow. Another great, exactly. It's cool as the other side. You got of them the, all listed. It's, oh, it's yeah. cool Give as me the, another one. Cool as the other side of the biscuit. <laughs> Don't hate to play it. All right, dude. Don't hate to play you it. Did, right. did that hate, already. Hate the game. Getting his freak on. <laughs> Well, he says he invented that. 
This is all in here. I think Sly and the Family Stone invented that. <laughs> he didn't invent the pillow. Uh, he, that's he not it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, no, none of these that. things are invented by the guy. He didn't write these songs. It's like Zeppelin's first album. Ever. Willie Dixon wrote all these. <laughs> Willie <laughs> Dixon, anybody? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, so, so but, but James, as a Cowboy fan, yeah. admit that you're a little... Uh, you're would, a Cowboy fan. Would we be talking about this if it was the other way around? What do you mean? If, if, the, if Detroit... Got this no call. I yeah. think we would. Would be. we be talking about this? Yeah, I think we would. Be. Sure. No, sure. Detroit would did not lose the, the game on that call. What do you? What, what's your argument there? That we're like, I mean, I, saying, I don't have a horse. Like, everybody's as going long crazy as the, about this call. Listen to me. As long as the game, as long as it didn't cause Detroit to <laughs> to lose by seven. I mean, they they <laughs> kicked a seven yard punt after that. I know that was fun. Yeah, that didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst punt I've ever seen. What was that? <laughs> I but think it, of that sequence that that started. Yeah, that that you know started what? momentum that fucked them Let me tell you something. Completely. The NFL and uh, some guy from Nutley decided they don't want to see Detroit Green Bay next week. That'll have eight people watching. Ugh. So instead, Cowboys Green explain, Bay. Explain the Nutley reference, please, because no, <laughs> people are people are desubscribing as I <laughs> well, I'm only trying to explain things Nutley to Nutley has right? a lot of Italian-Americans, so you're saying a bookie a, uh, decided. Well, I mean, or Chris. <laughs> I'm just saying. Is that they, your anti-Italian? No, I'm half Irish and <laughs> half Italian. I'm just saying that's what happened. Nobody would have cared about Detroit, Green Bay. Detroit? Who are you? Where, where, where'd you get the word? Detroit. What's Detroit? Uh, Detroit. <laughs> who are you, Al Sharp? <laughs> <laughs> Detroit, Sam. Bank uh, Robin. Uh, no, I, I, uh, I think that, yeah, I, I, I understand your argument, James, but I'd be talking about it either way. Sure. I mean, because it was a very obvious thing to me. If you pick up the flag, it's got to be definite the other way. It's like when you review a play on, uh, you know, uh, on you know, yeah, on, uh, sure. in slow motion or something. You got to. It's got to be a definite thing. Yeah. Yeah. That pissed me off. NFL becoming a bunch of pussies. They are. I agree. Is that a Stuart people. Scott thing? <laughs> no, no, no. This is all Chris Cotton right there. <laughs> So, They're all pink on the fucking yeah, side. It is. So who, Wait, I've got who, some Stuart Scott quotes I found. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. They're all pink on the fucking inside. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good like, one. If the bitch talks, she can get hit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm known Stuart Scott. <laughs> now, who, who does Artie Lang pick in the uh, Green Bay Dallas game? Are you going to bet on that one? Uh, give me the spread. Let's What's you, the you know, spread on that one? Anyone got it? Got the paper? Give me an early spread on Green Bay Dallas. It's in Lambeau. It's got to be. I'm going to say. I'm going to say no, because you know Dallas is. Dallas plays Green Bay well. They, I think they beat Green Bay this year. Undefeated on the road. Right. So I'm going to say four points. Cowboys are getting six and a half. Ooh, nice. Uh, I like. You know what? Ravens are getting seven. Panthers are getting eleven and a half. Cowboys are getting six and a half, and the Colts are getting seven. The Panthers betting uh, the lock of the week. Bet against the Panthers. They're going to get destroyed. 11 and a half sounds like a lot. It's a sucker bet. Yeah. I I, don't you think the Panthers are going to get destroyed? Are they play I like, in, uh, the, I like the Patriots. Yeah. yeah they're gonna, they're Actually, I like all Seattle. the favorites. I think the uh, who are the Panthers playing? They're playing uh, the Seahawks. Yeah, the Seahawks. They're going to they're gonna lose by four touchdowns. That's my lock of the week. 11 and a half sounds like a lot, but I think Seattle's going to destroy them. I, you know what, though? I, I like Cowboys. Flipping, what do you think? Points. You don't think so? Oh, no. I think Carolina? Cowboys and a point's a good bet. Chris, you're, like, is, Chris, you're sleeping on a futon in uh, the three good, comics. Man. What do you want to put on that? <laughs> uh, I'll go like $20. $20. Is that a bet? good bet? Is that a good bet? $20. What? You know what? I want eight grand. I'll buy you in on the futon. <laughs> <laughs> Get him a nice <laughs> Are you real? I, I th- so you're not. So how are you still on the futon now? Or I thought you got a place. No. Over? Okay. This is uh, this is going to be a, the saddest fucking story ever. I'm off the futon not because I paid to get off the futon. It's because uh, one of the dudes who was a roommate moved out, so they just don't have anybody sleeping in the room. So I'm just I just took the bed in the room. Oh, good. good. So well, I'm in a not? nice you're bed too. That's for like a month. That's like when a married guy's <laughs> wife goes away for a week. <laughs> They're like, yeah. The amount of jerking off that's been going on. I love on. you're excited about it. It's a month, too. <laughs> it's a good month. <laughs> so, dude, you grew up in Philly, and you're enough of a Niners fan to where the cover of your phone is a 49er thing. Yeah, I'm a huge Niners fan. Oh, that, that sucks. sucks. That's that's sucks. Really I hate really the Cowboys. They suck at me, too. Though. Me, too. I can't stand them. And our fucking enormous governor, Ugh. Our, our disgustingly, morbidly obese governor, obese Witherspoon governor, I can't stand them. 
The God that watching him high five. He's a goddamn New Jersey governor, man. Well, you know he's already high fived him before, right? I know. Yeah, okay, from the, Philly, saying, the but Philly this is a playoff too. game now, too. Well, over there getting jiggy with it. Yeah, exactly. Got more quotes. Is that? <laughs> well, we know he didn't write that. <laughs> I mean, it's it Bob Dylan quotes. wrote getting jiggy. <laughs> Straight yeah. butter. Jerry right, Jones um, looked like Princess Leia next to Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> 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 really uh, plus, the giant fan, you're sitting there, you're aggravated. It's a Sunday afternoon, two weeks of holidays. You're, I'm sitting on the couch. My, my daughter's yelling and screaming, and my wife's yelling at me. And then I got to watch him jump around like a baboon. I yeah. couldn't, it was awful. Yeah, he really is disgusting. He's like probably sweaty. What what, what, what what does his taint smell like after <laughs> after watching a game like that? He's all sweaty. What does his ass? It is taint day here at the stadium. <laughs> all fans, do, do over. You, come on up. Do you know the indu- you know those industrial like salad prongs that they use for catering? That's probably what you would need to get the underwear out of his asshole <laughs> after, <laughs> after after a game like that. He's sitting on his fat ass. The entire you would need the jaws of life to get the underwear out How of his ass. How about the flight back? He probably took a flight back right away. A, on a private jet affecting the jet's landing, I'm sure. The yeah. jet's doing a wheelie because he's in the fucking back. <laughs> <laughs> on the cowboy jet, I bet. I bet he took the cowboy jet home. Oh. I fucking hate him. Oh, oh. <laughs> Killing me. And the Niners. Oh, let me get to oh, you. Oh, As a giant fan, over here. you we were born in eighty. This guy was born in eighty-seven. <laughs> By the time he, he was doesn't. born, Joe Montana cost me two hundred grand already. <laughs> and Steve, Steve Young fan. Steve Young fan. You were eight years old when I had the fucking fucking uh, Chargers in the under forty-nine twenty-six in that Super Bowl. Didn't you catch shit from your Philly friends for not liking the Eagles? <laughs> I had a Dallas they didn't fan. Mind. I had a Dallas fan friend. Let's see, Everybody that's else. the younger yeah, generation. Yeah, the younger generation. My, my guys... all my nephews root. One's a Dolphin fan. Oh, who the One fuck do you a Dolphin How fan? Did you root for the Chiefs. Well, well, no, a lot of those. Our generation has a lot of any team that was great in the seventies in the NFL. There's a lot of fans of because they were always on national TV. The Steelers, Dallas, Oakland, Miami. They're all over the country. Those fans. That's our generation. Well, you go to a sports bar now, it's all about fantasy football. So you'll have a Cowboy fan watching a Giant game. And if he has, you know, Beckham on his fantasy that week, you'll see him cheering him like, ah, oh, I need him to score a touchdown and get 10 points. Fantasy football is ruining sports bars because you can't get in a fight with anybody in Buster. Uh, uh, yeah, fantasy football is a big business, though, man. It's basically just gambling. I mean, it's legal. The NFL found a way to make money off gambling. They, they, they the probably, you, you know how mad yeah. they probably were? They couldn't get a piece of that illegal gambling action. You're talking about a trillion-dollar industry. Now they have it. Now they got a piece of it. Fantasy football is gambling. Right. That's all Horrible. the fuck it is, man. And the I, I NFL, even, free no agency, more. different guys are on different teams now. You, you got you know, it was, just, it was easier to be a fan. You sound like Michael Sonny. Well, that's what it is. It's true. No more. And nowadays, you, you, you used to be a build. You, for one year, you went like six and ten, and then you went. It's been like that for a while. That sucks, I mean, though. there's been free agency and people jumping teams for but a it, while. But it, it ruined. You, you, if you you know, if you fall asleep at the wheel, you don't even know who the hell you're watching anymore. Uh, no, I I I, I, uh, I gotta say that it's been uh, free agency. You know, made especially in baseball, people jump like crazy. Uh, but uh, again, I, I I think Detroit got ripped off, and I have no horse in this game except the fact that I hate the Cowboys. I I won, I covered, I got no bitch, but uh, I think the Lions uh, were were ripped off. Chris, your thoughts? <laughs> Cowboys can definitely suck a dick. Uh, Christy, Christy's pants. Is that another story, Scott? Look, <laughs> Cowboys can <laughs> suck a dick. <laughs> Oh God! How about all two, quotes. All how quotes. About two holding calls in the last four minutes. I know they were. When you look at the video, they were holding. But come on, five minutes ago, two holding calls on the final drive. Yeah, we're back to Nutley again. These, re- these refs, ridiculous. everything's pussy now. Everything's pussy. You can't play the game. There was another. I thought there was a clean hit. Oh, I got a concussion. There was a, yeah, there was. I got to get out the game. Stop bitching. Uh, is that wrong? I think we've got oh, that shoulder hit. <laughs> oh, that that's wrong. another Stuart Scott. Thing. The shoulder hit on the wire. I got a concussion. Oh, that shoulder hit. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I that thought was that was a legal hit. Too. I thought it was legal too. Know, that's but... football. That's called tackling somebody in football. Well, they said the guy was so short that it was hard to hit that guy. One guy's huge, you know, a giant. The other guy's short. Where are you going to hit him? Do you know how hard it is to, to make a hit 
like in a perfect spot when you're fucking trying to hit somebody and running, doing, running with a that fucking moment, four, With four that one. momentum, and you already got the momentum. Oh. You're in the air. Some of these defensive backs, I, I, DBs are the best athletes on the planet, I think. They're all built the same way. They're, they're solid, and they just fucking, they come at you, and sometimes they launch like a missile in the air. Uh, we got uh, Danny is. Filato, producer extraordinaire, just put up the uh, shot of Ugh. Jerry Jones and Chris Christie Ugh. embracing. Would you look at that? It looks like a, a, a National Geographic special <laughs> on a rhino in the wild. <laughs> it looks like a rhinoceros wearing a magenta sweater is attacking Ugh. a billionaire on safari. Ugh. That's what it looks like. A billionaire went on safari... And a rhino in a sweater went nuts. He looked like a and is eating him and his jerk off ass white friend. And what's that friend? Yeah, who's that guy? That's just probably some oil millionaire dickhead who gets the blow for the party and the underage whores. They all fucking look suck. Look how neat. Look how neat and everybody looks. And there's this baboon coming over. It's Christy awful. is dressed like the the manager at Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. He should be telling me the specials. He looks like a he servant. He should not be a governor. He should be telling me what the fuck drinks are on special. I want to apologize. Your your sizzling chicken was not sizzling <laughs> to me. He looked- I want to apologize. I ate your sizzling chicken. <laughs> to me, you know what? He looks like the service manager at Mawa Ford. Doesn't he just <laughs> again? Mawa will explain that later. <laughs> Shit. Mawa and Nutley references people. People taking back this uh, six ninety five as we speak. Off, of, off of a picture that they can't see. <laughs> That's off of Dan's Twitter feed, right? Now, if you've seen Is this that picture, your phone once, hooked up to the TV. You. <laughs> shit, you guys are high tech. I don't know how to make my phone play on my TV. He Good knows all guys. that shit. He's a genius. Shit. Dan knows all that shit. I can't make a fucking phone call on this goddamn thing. Artie <laughs> wants to find his StarTac phone. Thank God these things. Thank God these things weren't around when I was doing coke. It's perfect to do blow of a phone. Uh, we have what, post game. We have post game sound. Uh, a Sue Anonim. Uh, what's his name? Anamakin. What's his Adamican. name? Adamakin Sue discussing overturn call. This is gonna be great. Oh God! I realize I guess- it was uh, it was picked up after I saw the ref on the jumbotron and. Um, <laughs> Forced down, did the hard count thing, and then uh, we're back on the field, and uh, that was that. Wow, that was way less entertaining than I thought it would. <laughs> that tone, Luke. He sounds like a senator. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you go to Cornell, Donovan? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen anything like that before they announced it? Well, one other time, one other game we had earlier this year against the Saints. It's the only other time I've seen it. What? That was the coach. Sorry. Yeah, talking about the yeah. Uh, a lot of these southern coaches, man. Like yeah, look Bob, at here. Bobby Bowden, they all sound like the Grand Dragon of the Klan. I can't get that, <laughs> kicking that out of my head. Like Bobby Bowden. Really, like you were just dying to say something anti-Semitic. Uh, but uh, listen, I think uh, the Lions have a legitimate pitch here. I do. But they're going. They're done. And the fact that the Panthers are under 500 and in the playoffs, that's why my lock of the week, 11 and a half. Bet bet Seattle. Seattle is rested. They are well coached and they are ready. Their defense is going to hold uh, Carolina. Uh, you if think Carolina that scores, gonna move? Uh, if Carolina scores ten points, it'll be. You think that spread's going to move up to like thirteen? It'll go up. If it does anything, it'll go up unless there's an injury to Seattle or something. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think it'll go up. I think Seattle's got the best defense out of everybody too. I, I, still, I agree. I was at the Super fuck. Bowl last year, uh, and you could hear them popping those Denver receivers. Oh. The, the, those guys can hit in that secondary, man. And they're a fun team to watch. Seattle's going to be wrestling. I'm telling you, that's my – I agree with you with the Cowboys, but I can't go near the Cowboys. I can't no, you bet. can't bet. You my can't. lock of the week right. is Seattle. That's one of my son's eight jerseys, so. What is, <laughs> Seattle. what is Seattle? He has well, they Seattle, won. he has Miami. Yeah, they won last year. You know what? I, Philly. I'm telling you, I think the Cowboys, get they, 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 they're they on a roll now. They can win the whole damn thing, nah. which will suck. Ooh, the Cowboys? Please, no. Yeah. They're not going to get by Green I, Bay. They're they got gonna, a running back, Green wide Bay. receiver, tight end. Romo had a Aaron, Aaron Rodgers at Lambeau, baby. They're going to have to score well, 72 points. I think They're well, going to have to score 72 points to beat Aaron Rodgers. Well, a couple of teams from around here had did okay in, in Lambeau. No, uh, it's, uh, it's the playoffs now, baby. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm Giants, going by the frozen Phil- tundra. Come on, I'm going by the You're Eagles. About Seventy Green Bay years game. ago. No, did you see that game? They destroyed Philly. Green Bay just destroyed Philly. 
Uh, I think with Col- with Foles. By the way, yeah, the Eagles fans, you guys had uh, uh, some false hope there for that's a while. Why, that's why I never did it. That's why I couldn't buy, I couldn't I can't be one of those. But this year <laughs> was fucking... really bad. You got all the Eagles fans wouldn't shut Dude, up. They were good. No, they I I, I knew early on that they didn't have a D, so I was like, they can't they can't, can't win without a D, man. No, they don't have it. it, it Their defensive and, back stunk. And Mark Sanchez, who's thinking Ugh. he's getting a ring? No way. Who's thinking Mark Sanchez? You know why? The only way I could see that happen is because he used to be a Jet. And just to fuck the Jets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he would have won. But you're not winning a Super Bowl with Mark Sanchez. No way. You're not. I just wanted a round. One round of the playoffs. Yeah, so yeah. That's uh, another excuse for spending, what, $400 at the link? Yeah. I'm a Giant fan. You got uh, this, this, nothing worse than watching the Eagles and Cowboys be better. Yeah. It's horrible. Well, you know, look, the... The Giants and the Cow Eagles had the same exact year, as far as I'm concerned. Neither one made the playoffs. The Giants were pathetic, though, man. New York sports. I was. To- <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this very slowly. The Knicks are five and thirty-one. Yeah, they lost eleven in a row. By the way. <laughs> they're going for their record. They lost Twelve 11. in a row. They eleven in a row. row. They're going for the record. Franchise record. They Twelve gave in a row. These more. This Dolan guy is the kiss of fucking death. He's another asshole I can't stand. I, I hate Dolan with a passion. He hires Phil Jackson. And I, I said this with the Cubs with Theo Epstein. If a guy doesn't suit up and you give him more than $5 million a year, you're a dope. He doesn't play. I don't give a shit out what kind of mind he has. He doesn't play the fucking game. Phil Jackson's not even coaching. They're giving him all this money. They are 5-31. and 31. <laughs> Only good hoops team in the area right now is Seton Hall. Uh, yeah, hey, I'm a big Pirates fan. <laughs> but but 5 and 31 is insane. I, I made the mistake of buying my son uh, Knicks tickets for Christmas. Oh. Going on Martin Luther King Day. Yeah, well. To well, see the Pelicans. That's always a great game, though, in the afternoon. 5.30. Pelicans next. Well, you know yeah. what? I don't. Here's how you know you suck. When you, uh, That's when a great rivalry, Pelicans When next. you only... <laughs> if you, after 35 games... <laughs> they make that sign. Pelicans next. <laughs> and there's a team in the league that has less wins than the Knicks. That's mind-boggling. Who? The, the Sixers. 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 Oh, the Sixers, Sixers are four. worse. We have we went, uh, I'm we, a Sixers fan, though. Russ Maneev, another, uh, another nice comic, thing. took us to Barclays Center. Me and Dan, we saw us, uh, and the reason we got, you know, in and got good seats was we played the Sixers. Yeah. The Sixers played the Nets. The Nets beat them 88-70. Nets beat them by 18 points. They scored 70, the Sixers. <coughs> 70 points against the Nets. They were missing layups. The, the Sixers were missing fast-break layups. That's right. I miss... They're you know, a bad basketball You know what I... Know you they're miss, bad at the game of basketball. The fish that saved Pittsburgh. I, I, <laughs> Remember that? I miss the old That's NBA funny. when the Knicks would come in with Ewing. Utah Jazz, they average 120 points a game. Final score, Knicks 86, Jazz 80. I mean, like... Nowadays, everybody scores a lot of points. You can't touch anybody. It's the whole game stinks. That's another Plus thing. Plus the, 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 the basketball, too, is getting to be all pussy. When they got rid of hand cool. checking, I was you done. You can't touch anybody. They checked out. out. Yeah. 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 Jordan, Jordan's whole career would have been different. Well, Gary Payton would have been a piece of shit. Yeah. That was his whole game was hand checks. Gary Payton was a piece of shit. That's, First that's, that's, that's no Stuart Scott. I, I, like, I, like, I like Gary Payton. <laughs> that's another Stuart Scott. <laughs> Gary Payton was a piece of shit. <laughs> that's on the list. Gary, Gary Payton was a piece of shit. Did you <laughs> how many how Booyah. many fouls would Charles Oakley have in the game? Today? Oh, he, he would foul Charles, out with a minute left oh, in the dude. second quarter. Charles Oakley would be in jail. Charles Oakley was the shit. I like watching his fights. Dude, how about Nick's Pelicans? Nick's what, Pelicans. What, what, that what, is what, a Pelican name. Your kid is just gonna be like Nick's Pelicans. He man. has no how idea. That, that the Knicks the are terrible. How did that name get approved? They, they shouldn't be able to change names. At least oh, it's not Pelicans. Racist. It's not racist like Redskins. Come on, Pelicans. Uh, all right, well, that's it. Uh, basically, lock of the week to me is Seattle giving 11 and a half. I think that line will change again higher anyway. Man, a lot uh, of people the Ca- Carolina does not belong there. And Cam Newton is flimsy, believe me. Oh. You know, the people that have made a living of yeah. your locks over the years are just... Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Some guys in oh. Nutley have Bentleys. On them. Artie is lock of the week. <laughs> we remember... We remember. <laughs> We Artie, remember the Air Force. Artie, 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 remember the Air Force better hundred years ago. <laughs> I, I, I got good information. I Artie calls me way. up at seven a.m. Jimmy, I got some information. It's a lock. <laughs> Air I got, Force. I got good information. Air Force getting nine or giving nine, wherever it was. They scored ninety points a game. They lost thirty-seven nothing. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no I had. I was told that Air Force was uh, only going to score thirteen points. You 
one in five hundred bucks. Or me, I had ten dollars. My name. But you Ole Miss was going to score today. Anyway, <laughs> I bet the other way because I was getting and uh, thirteen nothing. They lost thirteen nothing. So what about lock. the Pelicans? Who's locked in for the Knicks? Pelicans. What do you got? Oh, I don't even know that. What's going on? What's going on? Well, the Pelicans are like they're five hundred. Believe it or Who not. Who cares? <laughs> I like this voice, though. That's Who were the Pelicans, though? Knicks, what team Pelicans. were they? I don't know. They're in New Orleans. I don't no, know. so they were the New Orleans Jazz, and before that, they were oh, no. the no, 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 Hornets? The Orleans, Hornets, yeah. No, now the Hornets are back in their show. See, that, yeah. the whole thing stinks. You can't have different shirts, Pelicans, Hornets. It's all bullshit. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, that, that, that's a bad name for a sports team, Pelicans. Uh, I Pelican. should have went hockey with Some the of that Pelican do defense. The, do the bird sound. Should have took That's <laughs> right. <laughs> I still think there's the Winnipeg now, Jets. That's coming great. into the stadium, give it up for your Pelicans. <laughs> <laughs> what the worst shit ever. What, no, it's like, what a non-intimidating sound <laughs> for, for a charge. Uh, all right. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Uh, for the, the final segment, we are going to have uh, phony phone calls. Rod from Bayside will take center stage. And uh, while uh, Joe is picking up Luke from the bus, Rod will yes. uh, Rod will play to we'll play some old calls, some new calls, up. and wrap this. Can up. Can I do a couple of plugs for and myself? Before, because before, I have to leave now. No, plug, plug, Joe. Yeah. So I should plug. So follow me on Twitter at at the Joe Matteris and uh, let's uh, what else? Whoa, whoa, geez, I should plug a gig. You come come and see me open for Artie. Let's no, plug you don't have to plug gig. that. Well, dude, I'm because I'm going to plug it at the end. So you plug whatever you want. All right. Well, I got to look at my date book. You mean Sarahville, January seventeenth at the Starland Ballroom? Starland Ballroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, da, 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 With Chris da, 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 Cotton, by the way. The yeah, three yeah, of us will these be are there. tough gigs to plug. I don't really have like a. Thanks for preparing. Jeez. No, I have all city stuff. You can't plug city stuff. It's just a. It's just a waste. <laughs> Towny stuff. Right, so I don't know. What, 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 uh, plug whatever you want. Oh, uh, jeez, I'm a, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, yeah, that'd be funny. I'll plug a temple that I'm doing. Ooh. Come and see Joe at a temple. <laughs> it's not South Temple Jersey. University. It's a temple. <laughs> it's a temple. Right. Yeah. Just follow me on Twitter at the Joe Matteris and check out my web series Fixing Joe on Official Comedy. Yes. Yes, it's good stuff. I've been on there uh, 14 times. I think. Uh, no, it's a good, good, uh, good podcast. Fixing Joe. Joe, thanks, man. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, we'll see you again soon. Tomorrow, maybe. I'll be here tomorrow. All right. Uh, back after this, phony phone calls. Rod from Bayside. It's <laughs> <laughs> like making that bird noise. <laughs> that is the most unintended. <laughs> Welcome back to Artie Quitter's podcast. That's the way this one starts. Tell me, I'll give you the lineups. <laughs> That's uh, Joe Buck's father, Jack Buck. That's how he sounded. Yeah, I used to love him. <laughs> Flyball Larkin. Bonds is there. He's got it. That's the way this one starts. Tell me, I'll give you the lineups. <laughs> Tonight on CBS, Meredith Baxter, Bernie Starr, there's a battered woman in uh, <laughs> I Want My Kids Back, the Jessica Connor story. Starring Meredith Baxter Bernie right after local news tonight on CBS. All right. Uh, he was one of the last true men in this business. I miss, uh, miss Jack Buck. With us now is one of the stars of the Artie Lang Show on DirecTV. <laughs> this is a funny kid. You know, I did, Howard used to always say this. Some people are just funny. Like the jackass guys. A lot of people have tried to duplicate what those jackass kids do and I'm not saying they're Albert Brooks or Woody Allen, but there's something funny about those guys blowing up their nutsack. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. It, it. They're funnier than other people when they try to do it. There's something humorous about those guys, the spirit they have. It's funnier watching Steve-O blow up his nuts than it would be me, I think. I don't know. Uh, and Rod is a guy who has there's something inherently funny about Rod, and that's why he's good at um, these phony phone calls. So he was a fan of the old show. And he called in to bust our chops, and he started making phone calls, contributing to the show, and we appreciate it. And uh, we're going to play a couple of his old calls uh, that uh, always make me laugh, and he's got a few new ones that he prepared for the first show. So say hi uh, to Rod from Bayside. What's up, Rod? What's going on, Artie? How you been? Uh, good, man. So uh, now you're still with also your lovely girlfriend, Marcy. Yeah. Uh, when I say Rod is... 
not a bad looking kid. I busted shots, but he's got a really beautiful girl. Right. How long have you guys been going out? Uh, five years now. Wow. So uh, chloroform works one. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. Is she uh, is she like complaining about uh, you? Uh, you know, making a move here, or you gotta go to the next level, or what? Uh, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say she's complaining, but we have a plan. So. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, what's the plan? Um, you know, she does. She does what I tell her to do. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt plan. that. I <laughs> doubt that seriously. What are you? Uh, you're in cop school. What are you doing again? No, no, I'm done. I'm actually doing probably your worst nightmare. I'm driving a truck right now. Right, but yeah. but <laughs> if I went back to driving a truck, that would be my. But, but, but yeah. listen, if uh, this doesn't go, I might be. This is my last. Uh, podcast is the last welcome mat before the door <laughs> in show business. So what? What? what you, school didn't work out. You were going well, to some forensic school. Yeah, I was going here? for forensic science, but it's just like in the climate of today, I don't even want to be a cop, honestly. No, or or, or anything. In the but field. I mean, this was not a cop. This was like a scientist, right? But huh? you'd be working for the cop. I mean, I guess right. it would. It's it's very difficult to get into, um, so I'm just I just need to, need to make some money. So. Right, I hear. You. I got yeah. a question. So scientifically, how would you choke me? Um, <laughs> I, I yeah. thought that was hilarious. No, I'm sorry. He, what people. he does is plant. He plants evidence. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. You That's right. what I was in the So scientifically, for. how would you put Lucy's? In he my turns pocket? he turns a murder into a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> he turns your murder into you were charging him with a knife. <laughs> He's coming right at me. He's no, you, exactly. That's what he charged. He had no, a gun. But you're uh, <laughs> like Law and Order has the science person. Like right, they always exactly. go to the they go to the crime scene. You know, pick and up Law and Order always has a smoking a smoking hot chick. Always has those jobs. Like like every Victoria's Secret model has been a prosecutor on Law and Order. <laughs> And uh, the the scientist is that there's that really hot light skinned black chick. Mm-hmm. I forget I don't know her name, but she's always the scientist on it. There's another one too who's not as hot, the white chick. But uh, there's a there's Mariska. a hot, uh, yeah yeah. Well, Mariska Hargate is a you know yeah she's a cop. She had her years. I mean, a lot of cops look like her. Like I wouldn't want her to cuff me. I would commit crimes to make that. Happen. <laughs> uh, she's hot. But uh, yeah, she her. very hot. I did a scene with her. She's hot. Cut that out, please. <laughs> I want that I'm cut out. I want I'm very out. uncomfortable. Jim, uh, Jim, uh, <laughs> listen. You want to give? You want to give the batteries ten minutes? Jim, you want to give? The, playing you want to give the crowbar back that you used for that? <laughs> Was there whipped cream involved? <laughs> <laughs> Plugging a Law and episode, a Law and Order episode that aired in the early nineties. <laughs> streaming on Netflix right now. <laughs> uh, no, Jim, of course, did a lot of work. A lot of work on Law and Order. Uh, like everyone, every, like everyone who has a SAG card in New York City. <laughs> I'm a five-time champ. On Law and Order, were you on Law and Order SVU or the regular? Uh, twice on SVU, three on the regular one. I don't know why I walked down this road. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan of SVU. Who are you, Ravens number two or three? <laughs> yeah, Chris you know, Cotton I, is mocking me. I, did the, I, I, go back, I go back to Jerry Orbach. No, nah, he's Come done on. a I mean, Jim has done a lot of acting. I, actually, let's plug it. Jim might be in Taken 3. <laughs> yes. We, we don't know for sure. <laughs> I was gonna, he doesn't know if he got cut out of it. I'm going to fucking see Taken 3 like I give a shit. As far as I know, I'm in it. That's the latest thing I got. Yeah, but I know. I'm going to go sit through it for... uh, What do you play? I play uh, Cop Brooks, FBI agent. (laughs) Cop Brooks? Literally said it. Brooks. Cop number one? I got a nice little little bit in it. Yeah, so I mean, so you're probably in it. I'm also in Most Violent Year. What's that? It's a movie that just came out. You're going to love it. Uh, Jessica Chastain and uh, the guy from... uh, She's the fire crotch from... uh, The guy Oscar, I can't think of his last name now. (laughs) They might get nominated for Academy Award. What might? My violent A year? most violent year. You're going to love it. Jim's it's an Artie Lang kind of movie. <laughs> what, is, wh- why, what does that mean? It's a good that drama. Con- it takes place in 1980. No, no. It takes place, it takes in, place in 1980. In a, it's what like am I, a, a Phillies fan? It's got a good uh, <laughs> Chinatown, Godfather feel. All right, shut his mic off. Shut his mic off. <laughs> <laughs> Jim starts getting on the resume. We better shut the mic off. No, all right. Thank <laughs> you. Know you like the movie. What do you you hear something else you were in, blurt it out. The family with the near. Oh, <laughs> uh, so Rod uh, from Bayside, we're gonna now. Uh, I know James is a big uh, James Flippin, uh, our tech guy. He's a big fan of your work mm-hmm. too. So you picked out a couple of select Rod calls. Uh, here's uh, here's Rod from Bayside doing what he does best. You guys nuts. Larry and Tom's River. What's up, Larry? <laughs> Hey, Mike, uh, I wanted to ask you how you feel about Dan Filato from the Artie Lang show taking a bologna baton in his duty dumpster. <laughs> and so there's a guy who just waits and sp- that's not getting on the air anyway. So you just, you know, you waste your time. It's just wasting Mike, time. You're going to be tell vulgar you. to, uh, to impress air. some of the show somewhere. It's not going to get on the air. It's a waste of time. 
you can't get it on the air. John and Jersey. Mike, it was on the air. <laughs> How does this? <laughs> does anybody? Does anybody? Who has? I want to know the guy who has the job of telling Francesa after the show. Mike, it got on the air. <laughs> I, I don't think they tell him. I think they just let him think that. First of all, he, so that means he's doing a whole rap on the air that's referring to nothing. Mm-hmm, right. Like, no one knows what he's talking about. Clearly, that's on the air. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes he goes on for like five minutes talking about how it's not getting on the air, why you got to mention Audie's name for. P- play, that, play that one more time. I want to hear that rap. <laughs> the baloney. guy's thing. nuts. Larry and Tom's River. What's up, Larry? Hey, Mike, uh, I wanted to ask you how you feel about Dan Falato from the Artie Wang show taking a baloney baton in his duty dumpster. <laughs> and so there's a guy who just waits and sp- that's not getting on the air anyway. So he just, you know, he oh, wasted time. Get it's on the air. time. You're going to be vulgar. I mean, it was like to, a... Uh, to- <laughs> Baloney baton on his duty dumps. You know, you know how big of a fuck up that is yeah, yeah. on, 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 on the producer's part. That's not a quick. You didn't yell out fuck. You know, right. Bob or something. You yell, I mean, baloney baton your duty dumps. You had a long drawn out. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, let's hear, let's hear something else. Laura is uh, calling from Staten Island. Laura, <laughs> you're on the van in New York City. What's happening? Smooth. <laughs> it's an honor to speak to you, brother. Oh, same here, Lamar, and happy holidays, Lamar. the whole thing. And a very happy holidays to you, too. What's going on? What can you say? Um, I, I want to talk about this Dickey trade. Okay. Um, I think the Mets should have gone for the other minor league catcher, Dan Filato, on the Tuscaloosa turd cutters, <laughs> which would pretty much be R.A. Dickey for I Heart Dickey. No, no, you no, no, you're gone. <laughs> See you later. Goodbye. All right. You know, first of all, what, you don't know, think we've heard this kind of stuff before? We haven't the been there. It's a waste of time. Cutter. You're waiting on hold. You take time from somebody else. It's not funny to begin with the whole thing. Oh, funny. it's very funny, Steve. <laughs> Steve, you leave what's funny up to me. <laughs> okay, it's for the Tuscaloosa turn. One more time with that. That's okay. Lamar is uh, calling from Staten Island. Lamar, you're on the van Lamar? in New York City. What's happening? Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss his ass. No, loves same that. here, Lamar, and happy holidays the whole thing. <laughs> Smooth. A very happy holidays to you, too. <laughs> what's going on? What can you say? Um, I, I want to talk about this Dickey trade. Okay. Um, I think the Mets should have gone for the other minor league catcher. Dan Filato on the Tuscaloosa turd cutters. <laughs> pretty much be R.A. Dickey for I Heart Dickey. <laughs> no, 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 you're gone. See you later. Goodbye. You're gone. Uh, all right. You know, first of all, what, you're you gone. don't think we've heard this kind of stuff before and we haven't been there? It's a waste of time. You're waiting on hold. You take time from somebody else. <laughs> it's not funny to begin with the whole thing. His voice delayed. Did you guys ever actually see Steve Summers where he looks like? Well, he's a New York guy, so you wouldn't know, Chris, but he's an overnight sports guy in New York. And I... He looks like a guy who had a tracheotomy in the early 70s and lost a bunch of weight from it. And, it, you know. He's like 95 years old now, right? Oh, unbelievable. And I see him at auditions, and I have to. It's for sports. Steve now. Summers? Imagine at auditions? And you walk in the room, and it's, it's Steve Albert, Steve Summers. Did you beat and him me. out for taking three? <laughs> <laughs> Detective number five. Well, he read, the they read for sports announcers, like for radio. I know. Well, yeah. I used to, Russo used to talk about. And they lose out to like jerks like me. Well, <laughs> because, you know, they're not actors. It's funny. Sometimes those guys can't even play themselves. Sometimes it's it's hard to do. But right, let's play one more. <laughs> one more oldie but goodie. Off, let's go out to uh, Hector and Corona. Hector, you're on the fan. Hector. <laughs> hey, how are you doing tonight? I'm fine, man. What's going on? Before I get to my giant point, I have a quick story about David Wright to share. That's okay. Sure, sure. Uh, so my buddy Jack Tesson owned a clothing <laughs> store in the city called Twink Scarves, and David Wright was in the store, and he, and he said the main reason he is staying in New York is so that he can tongue punch Dan Falato's fart box. Chance to show some brains, and he just he just said that. They thought it was funny. Show some brains. Big night, the Giants spit the bit, and. and, and <laughs> You know, you know, it's, chance to show you're a wizard with your word. You know, you're a wizard. With you know, what it reminds me of it reminds you of how people get old self righteous on Twitter when they block somebody. Uh, good one. You're gone. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? You're gone. <laughs> Bye. Like, shut up. Well, well, a lot of these things I learned from Stuart Scott. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, turd, turd cutter and fart box were two big <laughs> Stuart Scott. Booyah. Ones. Booyah, tur- turd cutter. <laughs> Uh, so, Gemma is that, Lamb. <laughs> what uh, do we, is that out on the old ones? Yeah, well, let's let's play a couple more old ones. Yeah, it really is. Rodney and Bayside. What's up, Rodney? Hey, how you doing, Mike? Good. 
I actually have a pretty interesting story for you. I was in uh, Paris for the Springsteen show. Right. And, and outside of my hotel, there was this big baby gorilla fighting with the cops over there. You had to see it. It was crazy. He had a gorilla fighting with the cops. Yeah, he was a big baby gorilla. He looked just like Artie Lang. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I mean, did you really wait on the line to tell us that? I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> and, <laughs> this, I hope not. I hope not. Oh, He's so worried about you and your well-being. <laughs> mm-hmm. I hope not. I hope. <laughs> and uh, you know, I love the the other part about these phony phone calls. They always call you stupid. You, they, right. They're the ones getting fucking fooled. Yeah, and pissed off about it. Yeah, and aggravated. All right, you know what? Let's uh, let's play. So we have three new ones then, right? Right. So explain this because of the holidays. A lot of the, like Francesca wasn't there, so you got some people who filled in. Who, who are these people? Well, you got? well, one of the new calls is from is to Francesca. I used um, a Barack Obama. I huh? took some clips of Bar- Obama talking about sports, <laughs> yeah. and I, I used it to see if Francesca would believe it was him. And then I had Obama insult him, so he would hang up on him. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> okay, let's hear that. Barry in Washington. What's up, Barry? Thanks for having me. In. What's happening? Right, look at the Giants this year. Nobody would have picked them. No, they wouldn't have been. Uh, uh, they wouldn't have been crowned as champions if you had uh, a coach's poll. But it can't hurt. Uh, Who's the Giants? Of what Giants? <laughs> what Giants? Football Giants? Maybe they're looking at that big oh. buddy of yours. Football Giants. <laughs> I mean, uh, what, uh, uh, the calls get stranger by the minute. <laughs> Wayne and. Ben- Mike, that was the president of the United States. <laughs> Barry in Washington. I'm Barry in Washington. Play that again. Barry in Washington. What's up, Barry? Thanks for having me. What's happening? I right, look at the Giants this year. Nobody would have picked them. No, they wouldn't have been. Uh, uh, they wouldn't have been crowned as champions if you had uh, a coach's poll. But it can't hurt. Uh, Who the Giants? Play- what Giants? <laughs> what Giants? Football Giants? Maybe they're looking at that big butt of yours. Football <laughs> Giants? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what, uh, uh, the calls get stranger by the minute. Uh, in- That's fantastic. <laughs> you know, you can't tell. I guess maybe if you don't know. All right, who, who's next? What else you got? Uh, so the woman who was on last night, her name is Lori Rubinson, and she is on very infrequently but so so her reaction to, to every prank call seemed to be to just chuckle and say i don't know where that was going right like she's like a deer in headlights she doesn't know what to, how to yeah. react to it. she's not a, she's not a professional like princess yeah yeah <laughs> let's go to julius in flushing what's going on julius hi Lori. thanks for taking my call you're very welcome Lori. i'm watching this cowboys lions game yep and i really can't see how that was not pass interference the last time I saw someone use their hands that much was when Dan Filato was pumping guys off in the gym locker room. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, I, look. Pumping guys off. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know how Dan is. <laughs> <laughs> last time. <laughs> Play that one more time. Let's go to Julius in Flushing. What's going on, Julius? Julius. Hi, Lori. Thanks for taking my call. You're very welcome. Lori, I'm watching this Cowboys Lions game. Yep. And I really can't see how that was not pass interference. The last time I saw someone use their hands that much was when Dan Filato was pumping guys off in the gym locker room. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, she dug it. I, look. She's giggling. Mm-hmm. Sounds like she was attracted to you. It's possible. Julius and Flushing. I got that silky smooth, silky smooth voice. Oh, so. God. Pumping guys off. <laughs> Uh, so this is, this is one more. Yeah, the, it's the same woman, but this time I, I I figured the screener would know my voice after that first. So one. this is where Marcy. Yeah, my you're girlfriend actually Marcy. getting your pretty girlfriend involved in this darkness. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's a, okay. All right, Marcy in Bayside. You've been waiting patiently. What's going on, Marcy? Hi, Lori. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm a really big Cowboys fan, and I have to admit, when they won the game, I had the same reaction I had when I heard Ari Lang was doing a podcast. I could not stop flicking my bee. I mean, I really could not stop dragging my clam. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where that one was heading. <laughs> Wanting her clam? G- gagging. Gagging, gagging my Gagging <laughs> her clam. <laughs> <laughs> I like podcasts gagging your clan. <laughs> oh, that's fucking great, bro. Oh. Well, that's good stuff, brother. Thank you. That's good stuff. So, uh, all I can say is keep it up. <laughs> oh, you know I will. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, Marcy, thank you. Good job. She's, she did so good, I gagged her clan right Yeah, well, absolutely. 
Uh, I hope it's not true that you gagged your clam because of the podcast. <laughs> um, I appreciate you guys' input. And uh, again, when when you know, whenever you have stuff, let us know. No. And uh, if you ever want to come hang out, you can. You have anything you want to plug? No, I'm no. just gonna plug. You have a CD. website or something? Or you have a CD? No, a CD. No. I thought you said you wouldn't plug a CD. You'll be. Uh, you won't be doing. You won't. Be, <laughs> you want to plug where you're gonna be driving the truck? Yeah, I'll be. Uh, I'll be around <laughs> Brooklyn probably. <laughs> What what kind of truck? What what, what are you what are you driving? It's a it's a union it's a union thing. I don't want to. Oh, okay. I don't want to say what it is. I understand. Case, you know. I understand. Uh, okay. Well, Jimmy Palumbo, Jim, thanks for coming. You want to plug anything? What, uh, taken three. Taken so from three. what you say, you're in Taken Three. Yeah, I got Taken Three. I'm in Most Violent Year, and I'll be on uh, the Mysteries of Laura with uh, Deborah Messing on January 21st. What do you play in this Violent Year one? The, I the play, one that uh, might Jimmy O, the barber. And I've been in two of the director's <laughs> movies. Who's was, the, who directed it? J.C. Chander. What's he do? He did Margin Call. He did the movie with uh, Robert Redford on the boat. And now this most violent year. Wouldn't you? The guy's done two movies. You can't memorize the names <laughs> of the movie. The movie with Robert Redford on the boat. Well, that's all you got to know. <laughs> no, no. What's title. the name of he it? He got nominated for it. Was well, what is the name of it? You can't I remember forget the, the name poor guy. I mean, he's a friend of yours. I forget the, you know. You can't memorize two films he's done? It and you're in my one mind. Of, I don't have the... the, the you're not on the boat one, I guess. No. I, <laughs> <laughs> I would not be on... And plus, yeah, that's... And I'm going to be on Broad City as well. That's a What's Comedy Broad Central City? show. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. When well, he's on someone else's podcast. And he's like, yeah, I was in the movie with Audie Lang, the softball one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. That's exactly what they say, though. <laughs> no, I, and you know the title. All is lost. <laughs> What'd you say? All is lost. All is lost is go. what? The name that's of the, the Redford, Redford movie. Oh, Red that's who directed this movie, Most Violent Year. And it came out December 31st. And it's, uh, it's a really good movie. I think you're going to dig it. It's a good idea to release a movie New Year's Eve. Well, they did it, so it's uh, eligible for. I them. understand. Big numbers. <laughs> uh, but no, Robert Redford is. Uh, that's a, he looks like he's 111 in that movie. <laughs> Everybody gets old. He was the coolest motherfucker on the planet, and Butch Cassidy. <laughs> this kid is like, and he looks ancient. He's one of those guys. He didn't age well. You know what I mean? Like he's got like. He's, well, he's he's 75 probably. Yeah, but I'm saying he. Uh, he he's looked weird maybe for a while. He, maybe he could be in beer league too with us. <laughs> <laughs> That'll happen. He, he's looked weird for a long time. Right? <laughs> uh, and Chris Cotton, what do you got, man? Uh, I'm just gonna do basic shit. Uh, at Cotton Two One Five. That's everything. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that Don't stuff. Don't get too excited about it, Chris. Hey, hey, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm ball of excitement. Uh, and but more importantly, uh, go on CinnaCityComedy.com. That's that's the. The company I own, me and all my friends together. You own a company? I have an LLC in which I... Uh, <laughs> they run it off the futon. <laughs> listen, listen, it's all in the iPhone, baby. I uh, hear you. I hear you. <laughs> but uh, uh, CinnaCityComedy.com, please go on there, check it out. Got a, and they got a great podcast, Center City Comedy Podcast. Cool. Also a great podcast. Well, that's great, man. Well, you did a great job today. Thanks to everybody. Matt Reese, of course. Uh, James Flippin, Danny Filato. James, thanks for coming in. Marcy, thank you so much. And guys, this is it, uh, the first show. This was a lot of fun. I had a blast. And I, I again, who's ever uh, subscribing to this already, thank you so much. You guys are hardcore fans. We'll be back tomorrow. Um, and we're not giving out the, the phone thing right for now, right? We're not going to do that. Uh, but, but in the future, obviously, we'll have uh, guests, celebrity guests, and uh, you, we'll be able to take your phone calls in the future, too. Uh, we're working all that out, but we wanted the first show to be just kind of a hang. And um, that's it. This is Artie Quitter. Go to ArtieQuitter.com uh, for more details. January 17th, I'll be at the Starland Ballroom with Matt Arise and Chris Cotton uh, in uh, Sayreville, New Jersey. Check it out. And what's up, Rod? I just want to say, at Rod from Bayside on Twitter also. That's what I asked you before. I know. I forgot. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I forgot. I'm asking for it. At Rod from Bayside yeah. on Twitter. And I guess your phone calls are up there and everything. No, I have a SoundCloud page if you want to check that out. But. Well, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, i got to pull this out of <laughs> Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you got? Why? Well, that's plug everything. Just Listen. Twitter, just Twitter. Add Rob from Bayside. You know, why not SoundCloud? Well, because that's where I put the calls to give to you guys, so this way nobody hears them. Before. Oh, all right. Well, th that's all right. Don't believe me. No one's going over there. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Making good points. Right? Nice gesture, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is Artie Lang for the Artie Quitter podcast, the first show uh, saying, take care, brush your hair. I'm going to see if they got any food for carnivores <laughs> up in this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> <Right. laughs>